Coco Talk is an unscripted live broadcast. Anything can and will happen. The views and opinions expressed by members of the panel and the live audience are their own and not necessarily those of the Coco Talk show, its sponsors, affiliates, or subsidiaries. Open minds encourage, sense of humor recommended. If any off color comments were made, we're sorry. Hi, this is Dale Lear, designer of TRS-80 Color Baseball, and you're listening to Coco Talk. This is Coco Talk, the world's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. It's time to drop your socks and grab your real-time clocks, and let's rock. Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world, keeping the Tandy flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, because Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world. All right, everybody, and welcome to episode 116 of Coco Talk Live. This week, we're going to be talking about the Coco Forever screening party winners and probably other Coco stuff, too. So are you ready? Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world, keeping the tiny flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop, because Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world. All right, everybody, we're here. We are live. It's Coco Talk time. You know what time it is? It's Coco Talk time. Welcome, everybody. We got a great panel here. We've got the Hollywood Squares. We've got the Brady Bunch. You name it. We're all here. Let's start in the bottom right hand corner and go in a counterclockwise fashion. How about we start with Jason, the Coco Man Rikerd? Welcome to the program, Jason. Hello, hello. Objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. <laughs> <laughs> we have the thunder from down under all the way in Australia. Legendary game designer in his own mind, Mr. Nick Marentes. Hello, uh, Nick. G'day, everyone. Hey. G'day, yep. <laughs> Crikey. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our own celebrity on the show, too. The host that brings in all the numbers, who draws the big crowds. The Internet's own Grant Leedy is with us. Hello, Grant. Yay. Hey, how's everybody going today? Everybody's going well. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not here just about the cocoa. We also let Apple folk in, too. And as proof of that, we've got our resident Apple guy. He's also a coconut, but Mr. Mark Overhalzer is with us. Hello, Mark. Hello there. Thank you very much. And balancing out the Canadian quota... Uh, we're going to have to mention his name at least three times to make up for some of his other comrades who aren't here just yet. So how about we say a big warm welcome to Nick Marota, Nick Marota, Nick Marota, everybody. Good day. Yeah, I guess I'm the only Canadian here right now, aren't I? Yes. Oh. Nick Marota. And he's here. Heavy responsibility. It is. You must carry the Canadian torch for I us. I will. <laughs> From Chicagoland area, member of the Glenside Color Communi Computer Club, all around nice guy. You know him. We love him. Eric Canales is with us. Hello, Eric. How are you? Hello, hello. And hello. We, also, we also have with us a guy who has been our backup streaming engineer, the guy who's kept the Tandy Flame alive many, many times. He knows a lot about hardware and is a sharp dresser. You know him. We love him. It's Mark Bosley in the house. Hello, Mark. Hello. You sound hey. biased. Yes. Uh, we also have a guy who gets probably a thing too many uh, from week to week in his collection, but they all look nice. And you know him, and sometimes we're jealous of him, but it's Brian Weasler in the house. Hello. Uh, hello, hello. Nice mug there, Brian, and I'm referring to your drinking cup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, in the center square to block, it's Ron Delvo. Hello. From Arizona. Toasty Arizona, where it's dry, dry, dry. Yes, 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 yes. And we've got an, a number of people already with us in the live stream right now. 
So who was here? Nick Marota was in a live stream. Terry Steggy was here saying, have a great show today, guys. So Terry was unable to join us. Mark Overholzer has been here. Uh, Nick Marota. Fred Dufois has joined us in Facebook. Hello, Fred. Mark B says hi. Alexander Wallace, our friend in Mexico. Terry Steggy says, I'm glad, Nick. Enjoy it, brother. Uh, Terry Steggy says, That's Coco related to forever. my PC, by the way. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> he sent me a new PC and it's there awesome. There you go. He it's says, cool. I'm here in spirit. Uh, Ken Reichard says, we are installing a loft bed. Okay. Thanks for the random uh, piece of information there. Terry says, I'm here in spirit. Tim Franklin, another Coco uh, Glenside member of the Chicagoland area. Tim Franklin's here. Says, hi, Mark and everyone. Uh, who else is here? Terry Steen, killer of couches, is here. Whoop, whoop. He is here. Um, <laughs> Terry Steen says, hey, Mark, sorry for letting my Cocoa Pie project push the PS2 mouse project to the back burner. Be back on it soon. Joe Burnett has just shown up saying good afternoon. And Davey Mitchell from the European area is here, too. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. Um and uh, so the main thing we're going to do today is, number one, remind you all of a very special event we're going to have tomorrow evening. And that event is our Coco Forever private screening party. And hopefully DeBruce will show up here at some point in time today. But for those not familiar, and by the way, um, David Ladd has just joined up here. Let's see if I have the right button for David Ladd. Let's see. David Ladd. There we go. There's David Ladd. And then let's see if this is my other David Ladd button. Thank you. Yes, you're too kind. And no, thank you. that's not it. How about this one here? Oh, I'm much happier breaking stuff. There we go. Mr. I'm happy Dee breaking Bruce. stuff. David, can you? D. Bruce. Bruce says he'll try to join us a bit later. Yep. Yes. Okay. David, do you copy? Yes, I do, sir. And how is everybody today? We're doing much better now that you are here, David Ladd. Um, why? Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I was I. worried about where the show was going to go, but now I know. Now Round we it. know. Um, so yeah, we want to remind you that tomorrow evening, which is July the 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, is the private screening of the entire season of Coco Forever. There are 10 episodes featuring the cast and crew and, and commentary and story sharing. Uh, we've invited People who have purchased the uh, any or all of the episodes have been invited. The patrons of the show have been invited. And then we also had a little contest where we basically says, hey, if you would like to join our screening party, send us an email and tell us why. And so we've got an email. I'm going to go ahead and go over the list in a little bit, letting you know all the people who will be joining us on the program. So um, Terry Steen says Coco Forever, Forever is an awesome product um very cool all right so that's all we have to say about that we'll get into that in just a little bit we'll tell you who who's going to be joining us on that note after we typically do our panel introductions we play the game that we like to call show and tell project updates and acquisitions does anybody have anything that they've done or come across or acquired this week that you would like to share with the world anyone anyone yeah, I've, I've got a, a bit of a project here I've been working on. Um, this I've got, is Eric Canales uh, speaking, for those of you. I've got this box full of floppies, and they're the uh, Disc of the Month Club for the Glenside Color Computer Club. They run from January 92 to December 96. I've got them all imaged. I just need October 1993. The disc I have appears to be bad. Um, once that one's imaged, I'll, uh, I'll release that on the internet along with uh, some directory listings and okay maybe pick out a few programs to to look at so re remind us or, or enlighten us for those who don't know this is the disc of the month club is something that it belonged to or still belongs to the glenside color computer club so let us know a little bit about that and and what it contains um you know how many floppy disks we're looking at here what's on them the blue well blue. uh there's one one every month. Um, I think 93 had a bonus disc. Um, I haven't looked at a whole lot of what was on these discs yet. Um, they were released for a few years to members of the club as, just as a, a disc of the month uh, exclusive for club members. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know much else about about these. Well, I mean, I'm assuming they're like mostly software written in BASIC, open source, public domain software, things like that. That's that's correct. Yeah, they were submitted, uh, I presume, by club members or, or or various locations. Some of the discs appear to just have images on them or in okay. image. So oh, like, like picture I'll images. Be, yeah, like a picture. I'll be interested to see what what's on those. Okay. Um, this demo I have running in the background is the waterfall demo, uh, written by, uh, I forget who it was, who it was written by, but it, it's a, a palette, um, graphic image. Uh, I, I presume that, uh, Marenti has uh, copied this for his game. <laughs> his cheap knockoff, right? So, yep. uh, okay. Very cool, very cool. So that's one of them, and I, then I I can barely see it in the background, but it looks like a nice graphic there. So we have a waterfall, animated waterfall going down between a cliff or some rocks and things like that. Uh, very cool. So Alexander Wallace is saying, is it too late to send in your email? No, Alexander, go ahead, send in your email, send your email to cocotalk at cocotalk.live, and we'll be happy to invite you in. And um, And yeah, that's cool. Uh, so that's a project you were working on, and his project is done, except for which which floppy are you missing right now? So for I, those... I, I need October 93. I've emailed a few people who might have that, and uh, once that's imaged, then I'll I'll put the uh, collection out on Facebook and, and maybe the Glenside website and wherever else. Uh, the Cocoa be. Archive, probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, that's a cool project. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Um, and also, while we have you here focused on, uh, we just had a Glenside Color Computer Club meeting this past Thursday. Uh, many of us on the panel were there. You were there in person at um, Brian Schubring's house. Um, I, I think one of the things that we wanted to mention, I believe John Linville has already posted this in a few of the Facebook groups too, but we want to start focusing on coming up with a theme for next year, right? So the year is 2020. And it's the 40th anniversary of the Coco. So just going with 2020 and 40th anniversary, there are some ideas for themes. So along the lines of the themes, we need artwork. We need theme suggestions, possibly theme songs, you name it. So for those of you out there with the creative uh, genes in you, or if you have a pair of creative genes you can put on um, to do something creative, we'd be love to see some submissions for that. Um, uh, this year's theme that just passed was Make the Trek, and so it was kind of a Star Trek theme, and so we had some artwork that went with that, and then Bruce Moore did a very cool song parody to that, so it'd be cool to see what you guys come up with for the for next year's Cocoa Fest, the 2020, that's the year, and the 40th anniversary, so put on your theme thinking caps and, and go forth and theme. Uh, cool. Anything else, Eric, you wanted to uh, share with us? Oh, uh, well, not really. I uh, I am bringing my, uh, for tomorrow's show, I'm bringing my uh, bandana here that uh, has all of the instructions needed to uh, bring modern technology to the past. Okay. Uh, What's hiding it, behind that bandana? It's suspicious. Uh, just, just some projects I'm working on. I got a cocoa taken apart. And, uh, yeah. Very cool. All right. Uh, Brian Weasler, have you acquired anything else this week? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I, I do got one thing to show you, but I got uh, just a couple things that came in uh, the other day here. Uh, a couple games that I've been, well, one one that I already have, but it was in with the group there was uh, okay. the Canyon Climber. So I thought it was a fun one. And then uh, one that I, I've been waiting for, and that was uh, Pinball. Okay. So got that one there. So that was kind of a one I've been waiting to get. And then one that uh, I thought was kind of cool, and I did post it out there on out on Facebook and got a lot of uh, nice comments about it. But this is the book that I, I located. Oh, yes, yes. Lots of comments on the font, on the fact that the robot guy looks like the guys from Daft Punk. Um, <laughs> you yeah, know. this actually came all the way from uh, from Australia. So, uh, oh, here, Nick. I'm sorry. There, like, is that better? Crikey. <laughs> ah, now I see it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Right. No, but... Uh, no, but it was really a, a very cool book. I had never seen this one before. It uh, it covers a lot of the same materials that you see in some of the other books where it talks about basic, extended basic, uh, gets into a little bit about graphics and uh, P modes and uh, um, some of the semi, uh, semi graphics and stuff. So it, uh, it's kind of an interesting little read. But uh, yeah, making the most of your color computer. And it's interesting that they spelled color correctly in Australia. 
Right. So, it's, so <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no extra view in there. Yeah, and actually, what, uh, yeah. I, I do have a question about the cover there. Is that is that the origination of the melted keyboard with the laser there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pew, pew, there pew. you go. <laughs> well, it so, doesn't yeah. even look like a cocoa, though. It does. Yeah, it's a little, it's little warped bit. at the end. It's, it's a, a little... Yeah. It's kind of the ratios are wrong. Australian cocoa. Right, yeah, you can kind of see the vents right here, and then here's your uh, here's the logo. The ratios are wrong. It's compressed from left to right. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it looks like a very stylistic. It looks like what a uh, almost more. It looks like a cocoa two, a cocoa one keyboard on a more cocoa two ish form factor. So it's kind of a hybrid cocoa one point five or something, you know. Um, cool. I did have a question. Did have a question for Nick though. Was there a lot of Australian specific books and well, things like that that were out there? I, d I didn't know if that was really Australian. Does Does it actually say it's Australian? I mean, it's. It says uh, on the back, it says published by, uh, was it uh, Prentice Hall of Australia, P -Y or PTY LTD, um, uh, if you look or, close, or Candy Australian if you, LTD Corporation. If you look close, it hmm. says Crikey Press. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if this will focus or not very well. Probably not. But yeah. anyway, but uh, no, it says uh, uh, for Candy Australia LTD. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So I was just kind of curious. Like you, like you said, the spelling of color is wrong, but <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, yep. So uh, I, yeah, I ran. And and you're just getting all this stuff on eBay, Brian? Yeah, this was uh, through eBay. Yep, I just did a did an eBay search and uh, happened to stumble across this one. So, yeah, there's ac actually um, out there right now. There's probably about twenty or twenty five items that uh, an individual from Australia has posted games uh, some different joysticks and things like that that are out there and because it says shipping from australia so i don't know if somebody out there is uh hmm. doing some house cleaning or getting out of the out of the hobby or came across some stuff in the back closet and, and is his last and name dundee by any chance <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take to generally get something from australia uh this actually took i would say about eight days yeah from, that's about from, right from the time that he uh, from the time that he sent it uh, to get it here to uh, where I'm at, so yeah, Not bad. and the shipping is pretty re shipping is pretty reasonable. It was about as much as the cost for the book, so okay. but uh, I guess that that's to be expected. Yeah, when you think about how many kangaroos they had to sacrifice to get it across the outback. <laughs> <you know>? so. <laughs> so yeah, so it was it was a fun one to get. I, I I've enjoyed looking through it. Okay, so, yeah. very cool. Thank you for sharing. Was that it, or do you have other uh, items to make us jealous about? <laughs> No, not this week. Okay. I think right now, Brian, the based on the email that you sent me, we're not going to get into divulge too much information, but maybe just a small tease for now. But Brian Weasler is, is working on potentially, um, and by the way, Ron Delvo, um, mm. he is uh, stepping on your turf here. I don't know if he got permission to do this, but uh, he spread <laughs> his wings and he is looking at booking a guest and it's going to be potentially a pretty big guest that we may possibly have next week. We're not going to give away too many details right now, but other than to tease that you might want to tune in next week for, uh, let, you know, right now we have the Internet's own Grant Leedy. So, we, you know, we, we are grateful that we do have celebrities join us, but this might be somebody whose star shines just a wee bit brighter than Grant's does. So um, stay tuned for that, and we'll let you know. Uh, so, Is there any kind of a clue? No, no, just a tease. Just going to be a little tease. Like so. a machine language clue or a... <laughs> you know. we, really, we really ever have a clue. Yeah. No, we've never had a clue yet on this show, so why start now? Um, is, somebody who's gonna, is there somebody who's going to go far? Uh, all I can say is it does not involve, or may or may not involve an arithmetic chef left. I don't know. But um, oh. no, we're not going to say anything else other than it'll be a special guest that you'll probably want to tune in for. Uh, Vegemite not included, but <laughs> Matt, she says... Uh, <laughs> tie me kangaroo down, sport. Tie me kangaroo down is what Terry Steen's saying. All right. And Terry Steen's not busy, uh, you know, taking out couches on the highway. He's, and there's Jason Reichard in his own <laughs> automobile. Look in your rearview mirror there, Jason. You got the Canadian Mountie after you. <laughs> I'm still parked. <laughs> that takes I special talents. I haven't even I haven't even put it in drive now. Oh, now it is. But all right. 
<laughs> uh, excellent. It wouldn't be an episode of could talk about at least one person joining us from the road. That seems that we've got to have a Canadian, a car driver, and some other foreign dignitary here. And then yeah, at we least are... he's driving a, a good Mopar. <laughs> a journey. All right. A red journey. Do we have anybody else have anything they want to share with us this week? Any uh, show and tells, acquisitions, news, updates, anything else? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller. Nick Morentes, I think you have a new blog post, don't you? Um, I'm not sure what, what you're up to. I did I did do a uh, Gunstar blog about a week ago, so okay. I don't know if that's been announced. Uh, okay, so we can possibly look at that and maybe have a little game on segment. Yeah, I can't remember. Did we... Um, did we play that last week? Oh, I can't Ron Del Vote has an acquisition. Sounds like you've got a laser. Gunstar. Oh, he's got the sound effects for your next game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did some dumpster diving, which is appropriate for this show. <laughs> <laughs> I got some really sexy, on fire? <laughs> sexy glasses here. Oh, look at that. Yeah. What do you think? It looks good. Put them on. Huh? Do they yeah. smell like a dumpster? Yes, they do. I have some cheesecake on the side here. <laughs> that you got from the dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> you really know how to pick them. It's gone bad. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. Very cool. David Ladd, do you copy? I, I want to remind you guys, yes. please, uh, do you have anything you want to update us this week with Dave's Hobbies? Any progress you're making on uh, frying pan electronics or anything like that? Nope. Only frying my fingers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fr fry but nothing fingers. new. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So we've okay. gone well, around. Have, Go ahead, Ron. Have we beat, have we beat this show to death? Yeah, though? we have. Let's, let's play the <laughs> let's play the closing the closing credits and let's get out of here. All right. All right. It's, it's hey, Miller time. Yeah. I want to remind you yeah. that we are live on Spreaker as well, so you can experience Coco Talk. Uh, a number of ways. So we stream live on YouTube. We are streaming live. We are multi-streaming on Facebook. We also stream on Twitch and Mixer. We are streaming live on Periscope and Twitter. And we are audibly streaming live as a live audio podcast right now on Spreaker. So there are many, many, many ways to enjoy Coco Talk. And uh, ask your doctor if Coco Talk is right for you. And if Coco Talk lasts more than four hours, you're welcome. Um, okay. So do we want to take a, maybe a commercial break and then we'll come back and we'll announce who's won the contest and maybe get into some news and things like that. You know, speaking of streaker, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it back in the eighties when there was streakers? Remember that 70s. in the football games and stuff, or was it seventies? No, yeah. When was that? There's never streaker. a wrong time to streak, to be honest. So well, yes, okay. they call them to streak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's they, the song. Yeah, yeah they yeah. call him the streaker. Yeah. What do you think? Great game for the Coco. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. The Coco streaker. That could be. <laughs> Ken Reichert says, who enjoys Coco Talk? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you guys a question. You guys are all familiar with Samuel Gimes, right? Yes. Yeah. So a prolific writer. Samuel Gimes, prolific cousin writer. Cousin of the gimme. He is. So, so Samuel Gimes has been, um, you know, He's been putting a lot of thought into things lately and sharing those with us. So this will be the latest in a series of, of segments brought to us by Samuel Gaines that we call Coco Thoughts. So please enjoy Coco Thoughts 6, everyone. And now, Coco Thoughts by Samuel Gaines. What if, knowing what you know now, you could go back in time, join the Tandy Corporation, and change the course of history? Or would you just go back to a burger chef before they're gone? Hey, have you got your Coco 3 yet? Hi, this is Rick Adams, author of Temple of Rom and Shanghai, and you've tuned into Coco Talk, the nation's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. Get ready. 
What's going on everybody? Original Gamer Stevie Stroh here, and if you're a fan of vintage computing and retro gaming, then you're going to love our retro swag shop at 8bit256.com. There you will find custom designs by Instagram artist Joel M. Adams. You can get I'm a Coconut, Coco Talk, and other cool video game images on a t-shirt, coffee mug, or mouse pack. So if you love retro, then head on over to the retro swag shop at 8bit256.com today. Tell them the Original Gamer Stevie Stroh sent you. Radio Shack TRS-80 put the world of color computing into your home. Instant loading program packs turn any color TV into an exciting game arcade. Ah! And there's more. The color computer is an educational aid, a home management tool, and up-to-the-minute electronic information service. The programmable, expandable TRS-80 color computer from $399 only at Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. Hi, I'm Bruce Moore, and this is Jacob Moore. Jacob Moore, gotcha. And we are the Forest of Doom guys, and the Coco Forever guys, and we are Coco Fest, and we love Stevie Stroh. Imagine a different world. A world where Tandy Corporation has the upper hand. Where the Coco surpassed all competitors. And all you have to do is travel back in time without making a single mistake. Coco Forever. How does it feel? I'm still believing. You definitely earned this office. Yes, you're too kind, and thank you. You want to grab some food before we head back and look at that alt reality OS9 module? <laughs> it's only a 40 years past due, but yeah, sure. How does it feel? I'm still believing. Radio Shack, America's technology store. Computer shopping has never been better at Radio Shack. Here's proof. Our new ultra-high performance 386SX 20 megahertz computer with 85 megabyte hard drive, only $12.99. And it's from Tandy, manufacturer of the best-selling PC compatibles in America. Or get a 286-based Tandy home office computer with color monitor and hard drive, only $899.95. Shop your friendly nearby Radio Shack. Great selection, superior service. Nobody compares. We now return you to Coco Talk. And we're back after a brief nine-minute commercial break. We have returned, and the panel is still here. We've managed to keep the panel awake. We've managed to keep the audience awake. The audience is still viewing, so thank you for being here. Uh, over I, the, go I, ahead. I did. I did have a acquisition. I got. I forgot about. But it's. Uh, I got a boomerang from uh, Richard <laughs> to put in my computer, but it's a little too big. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the manual for it. Uh, it's it's Australian. It's a book on uh, Australian slang. Wow! Can you can you see it? But yeah, we can kind of sort of see it. You got to hold yeah, it up a little and, higher. Australia. And how thick right. is that book on Australian slang? It's it's it's, it's, it's pretty it's thick. Eight, eight inches thick. <laughs> wow! That's like that's like a a, a white pages Australian Anyways, slang. We got this at a garage sale. From what an Aussie Bible. Time. That's it's an a, actual real one. A real boomerang. Know? It looks like it yeah. looks like a double-headed hockey stick. It's, um, it, has, it has some kind of a uh, code on it. Oh, those are cryptic runes. I think uh, Nick can translate that. <laughs> What's that say, Nick? It says, if you can read this, you're too close. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Reichard says that's the 16 meg boomerang. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, no, that's pretty cool. So, uh, you have a, a thick, thick book on Australian slang. So maybe for our segment today, because we're going to run out of actual real things to talk about pretty quickly here. So we're going to just turn to random pages and, and enlighten ourselves on Australian <laughs> slang. And then maybe crikey. Crikey. Yes. Oh, crikey. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, D. Bruce Moore wants to know if that boomerang works with Sierra games. Do you, have you tested it on the Sierra games? 
Well, I haven't really tested it. I'm afraid. He can't get it in his cocoa. Well, this sucker could, could hurt you. <laughs> you know, look at it. It's got red ends. It does. That's the warning. All right. Yeah. It's actually wood, too. Okay. Speaking of, of Australians, you guys are doing a really shit job of letting in our panel here. But we've got uh, Chad Edward, Nick's neighbor, a fe also a fellow Australian, has just joined us. Hey, Chad. Welcome to the program. Hey. Chad's finally. got a real Australian accent. Yeah, finally someone I can understand. <laughs> Hello, Chad. Chad, do you copy? Right now, I can't even hear him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Chad, let me get a crikey out of you. Oh, crikey. <laughs> At least he's here. <laughs> yeah, so Chad's here. All right, we're going to move on with the show. So um, in the past few weeks, uh, L. Curtis Boyle has taken on the responsibility of being our news anchor. And um, L. Curtis could not be with us today. So in his place, we are going to have, from the Glen side, Color Computer Club, we are going to have um, Eric Canales is going to be our news anchor today. So Eric, you're not going to hear um, the music, but I'm going to play a little musical intro. And when I say take it away, Eric, that's when you, if you want to start sharing your screen, you can just share your screen now. But I'm going to introduce you. This is a professional show. We're going to play some music. I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to say, take it away, Eric, and you're going to take it away. Can we handle that? I think I think I can do it. All right. So it's because Curtis screwed it up the first time we tried this. So. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right. So here we go. Here, here, cue music. All right, everybody. It's time for news with Glenside Color Computer member Eric Canales. Take it away, hey. Eric. All right. So let me uh, share the screen here. And uh, we'll take a look. Uh, oh, oh, well, this before we get to the news, this is my uh, listing of the uh, Disc of the Month Club. Oh, wow. There's quite a few, quite a few discs. We got uh, 159 discs. Wow. And you had, these were all physical floppies that you had to then use a real floppy drive and then image them over to a disk image. So we've got. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I had to read them multiple times to get it to work. I, I wrote a little program to uh, just keep rereading it until it worked because okay. it, it was just taking forever. Roger that. Floppies. Yeah, well, well, let's get on to the news here. Um, yeah. see. So our first bit of news is uh, Nick Moreni's uh, Gunstar blog. Uh, he has huh. a new entry on collision detection. Um, and he talks about using... Uh, XY coordinates to figure out uh, the collision. I think this is called AAB B collision. It's uh, axis aligned bounding box. He doesn't describe that, uh, but his process is is basically that for all you game developers out there. Okay, and it looks like David Ladd or somebody's scribbling on the screen right now. So real mature, <laughs> real mature. <laughs> so. Uh, so Nick, uh, is is Nick with us, or he's not? Yeah, on? I'm, no, I'm Nick, still here. Nick, Nick is no, no, no longer with us, but we did celebrate the life and times of Nick Morentes before his <laughs> passing. So, do you have problems with the uh, bullets going through the ship? Because you would have that problem if the bullet is moving too fast. Um, uh, no, they it it seems to work correctly. Um, what do you mean? Um, I don't well, see, know. If the bullet to... is up here, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. Yeah, we can see. Yep. It. Yeah, if your bullet is up here on one frame, and then it comes down here, and it's here on the second frame, your bounding box check will miss it. Uh, yeah, but the bullet doesn't move in such big gaps, though. Okay. So, then, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. yeah. If, it, if it jumped in big gaps, yeah, it would miss you. <laughs> but that means it can't there's a, there's collide. The sound effects. You... you just heard some of Nick's multi-channel sound there in the background. <laughs> 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 yeah, so the, uh, the bullet doesn't that. jump that much, so it it will it will. Strike. Yeah. Well, there there's a technique called swept uh, access aligned bounding boxes where you, where you just elongate this uh, this bullet, you know, the collision box, not visually, just the box itself that it yeah. detects. You just elongate it by how fast it's going, um, in case you you do need. To. Can do, but. Um... 
we are trying to save uh, cycles in time. We don't want to spend too much time trying to detect for a collision. So you go for the simplest uh, process um, you can. So Okay. Well, as a good... Because um, the, the game does allow, I think, uh, up to... Well, currently, it, it's set to allow up to 10 missiles on the screen at a time. And the missile's not big. It's only just a, a bite-wide thing. But I could actually extend it to 20 missiles. But can you imagine the game if it had 20 missiles as well as, you know, all the alien sprites and everything? It'd be pretty impossible. So uh, I set it to 10. I figured, well, that should be enough. <laughs> That'll drive you mad. That means you're making it too easy. Well, we'll see. <laughs> In the game testing, if it's too easy, I'll give it. I'll give it to um, to um, Nick uh, Moroda there, and he can tell me if it's too hard, because he's only just broken uh, past level one in Popstar Pilots. With... <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're stepping on the headline. I made it past <laughs> level one on Popstar Pilot. That's huge news. Oh, okay. <laughs> doing better than Stevie. Uh... Mm. Great. But um, yeah. All right, all right. Well, we'll move on here to uh, our next news update. Uh, Blair Ledoux, is it Ledoux? Ledoux? Ledoux. Ledoux. Kind of like Coco Doux. Yeah. I don't know. Ledoux. 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 Yeah. He uh, wrote some assembly um, extension for uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I think there's a video on it too that I watched. Um, so it's got all kinds of uh, good features, uh, syntax highlighting, uh, basic line renumbering, or is this? Uh... Yeah, so this is using the Visual Studio now as an integrated development environment or as a development tool, right? Where now you'll get your syntax Visual. highlighting and everything else using the yeah. Visual, Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code. It's a yeah. light, light version. Okay. Okay, the, the, okay. well, I think, was it was it here? Somebody else uh, wrote some other extensions too to Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, I, th I think if I, um, what's his face, Darren Grant, who who runs Tandy in uh, UK, started this, I believe, and I think people are. I think I think Darren started with an extended color basic one, and then Blair has been introducing an assembly one that I don't know if he started from scratch or got some other people. And then there's been a lot of input on Facebook, so yeah. I know. Um, oh. Oh, here it is. It's in my uh, next window. This okay. uh, Jason uh, here, Jason um, Jason Pittman wrote okay. uh, wrote some extensions um, for Visual Studio Code, okay. and uh, it's got a few features too, uh, okay. including line renumbering. Um, you you can automatically launch uh, your compiler, CMOC, or I'm sure LW tools is to some disk tools. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of good development. Okay, work. so it's looking like a handful of people are now chipping in on this here, which is good. And then uh, hopefully these um, these things are getting merged together. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, I don't know if this is open source or what, but. Uh, well, I know the Microsoft tool is a free tool that's available that's cross platform, right? So you can do Windows, Mac, and Linux with the Microsoft tool. And then I'm assuming these extensions, which are basically syntax highlighters, I'm, I'm assuming these are these guys are giving them away because they're working on them. Uh, yeah, these are free and available right now. To is it to a play GitHub? With. Are these being posted well, on a uh, GitHub right now? Here uh, with um, Blair Leduc's um, assembly extension. Uh, this is on uh, the Visual Studio Marketplace. It's free. You just install okay. it. Okay, and, uh, and, and then. The links to all these news articles are in the description of this video, too. So if you're watching this live or you're watching it on a replay, you can scroll down into the description, and there should be links there for everything we're covering today. That's uh, right. Okay, so right. there's a video. on the on... video here describes his extensions, but I don't see a download link for these. Okay. Well, Jason um, Jason is one of the people who wrote in to want to be on the Coco Forever thing so i also invited him to join the show today i'm not sure if he will but hopefully he'll be on the call t tomorrow night and maybe we can pick his brain then yeah yeah oh no well looking here it looks like it's in the marketplace uh under coco tools okay so get that one okay coco tools and uh 6609 assembly all right so there's a few of them there yeah so try them out and i'm sure there's uh 
good features for both. So you'll probably want to see what works best for you. Excellent. Uh, moving on, we got. Um, that's Brian's Brian book Hayes cover he showed us. On yeah. Facebook. Does anybody Facebook. know Peter Vernon? Has, have we heard from him before or heard of him or any other um, books he may have done? You can see a slightly better picture of the cocoa from this angle, too, because Ron was saying, can you click on the picture and make it a little bit bigger there, Eric? Yeah. I just, you don't have to write, I think you just click on it in Facebook, it'll make it bigger. Yeah, it's like uh, I guess that's as good as it's going to get, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, no, it does look like a silver cocoa, just, you know, it's not quite to scale. But it has the same, it has the basic form factor, so it's kind of a stylized version. <laughs> Ron's turning his head sideways. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> you turn your head sideways and you squint one eye and you pour yeah. some lemon in the other one, and you know, yeah. you use your imagination. It looks almost like the real thing, right? So <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. Right underneath his elbow there, you can see the uh, like the 16K memory badge. Right oh there. yeah, there's the badge. Oh, you can see yeah. the vents. And you can see the vents up in the. You know, left hand side there. You know, oh, I'm a big fan of Vince. And it's the first it's the first model Coco one. It's got the badge on the left. Yeah. Or, or, well, and it's and, got and the and white and black and area. Yeah, the badge is on the left. Well the yeah, the Tandy logo badge is on the left and the RAM badge is on the right. That's the first generation. And the white Wait, black you know, area. You know what this is? He's not destroying the Coco. He's printing the letters on all the keys. Uh, that's it's no, no, he's it's engraving it. Th this is what Ed Snyder uses for his engraving. He's got a laser <laughs> robot. That is Ed Snyder with a suit on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's a suit on because he works uh, so hard. So there he is. Yeah, he's been doing this for thirty for, for thirty years. He's been siloning with his laser eye. <laughs> uh, Freaking laser. Say, um, Ron, uh, who's got the book? Uh, Ron has, has he? Um, yeah, Brian Weasel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ron oh, has Brian oh, the Weasel. Australian slang. Does it say who Peter Vernon is on the inside cover of let the me, book? Let me just see. Uh, I'm looking here. Um, Coco Talk uh, investigates the elusive Peter Vernon. That's right. <laughs> Alias Ed Snyder. Uh, I don't see anything specific. That's your real name? name. Oh, they don't talk about the author. Okay. Yeah, it really doesn't see uh, too much there. It just says Peter Vernon, 1954. Mm -hmm. Making okay. it your TSA Yep. Hey, it's my age. Okay. Not nah. spring chicken. A lot of comments there on the Facebook <laughs> group, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Come. Uh, looks come. like Hugo, Hugo mentioned he spells calor wrong. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, cool. A lot of people, lot of people yeah. like the font of the cover and stuff. So that yeah. was uh, that was yeah, probably the most great. common thing. Great. So. So uh, next up, we got uh, Sheldon McDonald posting about his own MIDI studio. Yeah. Q MIDI. Uh, yeah. Hard to say. Yeah. Q yeah, MIDI. Q MIDI. Okay. And this is a neat approach that he's taking to this, where, and we've seen a few videos from him in the past, where what he's doing is rather than having the audio go back right into the cassette line or to the cartridge line of the Coco, because apparently on that um, sound chip, which is the. Same one that's on the Game Master cartridge. It's in the Tandy 1000. That sound chip, as soon as it gets current to it, it starts making noise. So if you feed it directly through the cartridge line, you're going to hear noise coming out of your Coco. So what he's doing is he's running it through the cassette port. And then in, in basic, you use the command audio on to hear the music when you want to hear it. So you can turn the sound on and off through basic. And he's also been working on some MIDI players and trackers and some assembly routines where you can play music in the background. He's shown some videos in the past where his software, you load the music into RAM, and it's kind of like an interrupt-driven routine where it just runs in the background, and you can still hit list and type in dir, and all the stuff you were doing basic, you can still do. Um, and so now he's got, come up with his own custom 3D printed case and his own cable. And so this is a, a new way to use the Game Master cartridge to where you don't necessarily have to know how to program in assembly. You can do it in basic and just upload some music you compose into memory and have it run in the background. So it's kind of a cool application. I'm interrupt, inter, interrupt driven. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yes, yes. Cool. Hey, Chad says greetings from down under. Chad, it looks like you've been trying to join the call for a while. Are you going to uh, 
Is Chad back with us? He's tried jumping on a few times. Now that looks cool. Has anybody else seen, uh, seen any uh, stuff about this? Any of his videos? I've never seen a cartridge at color. It's uh, 3D printed. Ooh. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, so we'll move on. We got um, Pierre Seurat and Keys Van Oss releasing AD AGD game packs 33 and 34. Uh, they're on the uh, worldofdragon.org um, message board. Okay. Uh, these are pretty interesting uh, because they were written. Uh, it's a series of um, like five games on each pack. So there's 10 games written from a uh, class uh, uh, of children uh, age 10 in Bearsden Primary School of Scotland. Wow. And they, and they wrote these uh, games. It, they seem to have kind of taken the same template and, um, and and made their own sprites, made their own sound effects and, and their own stories. So I played them all. They're all, they're all pretty good. Click on some of the screenshots. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Bears in primary school. Okay. Right. This one Lost by uh, in space, Teacher uh, Dougie McKee. And uh, they're all written by by the students. They've got, uh, they've all got this platform uh, action going on. They've yeah, kind ladders. of all got their format with the scores and the lives. Um, Last human. Okay, that looks yeah, pretty cool. The last human, yeah. Well, some of them are really tricky. Like uh, some of the kids uh, made made hidden uh, spikes or whatever that make you die when you jump in the wrong spot. Ah, okay. So they're ha they're ha of them, like landing hazards. Yeah. And then some of them chose like a more traditional game where where you, where everything is is obvious, a platform or or something that'll hurt you. Okay. This one's the last human, and there's the human. So I thought that was kind of amusing. It doesn't look like a human, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, traversing through the level. Um, Mark gets sucked in. Okay, that's an interesting <laughs> name for a game. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these are really hard. I couldn't couldn't get through very far. Oh, I, hi, I'm Astrid. That this one I think is one of my favorites. Uh, Really, really well done. You jump over the smiley faces, but get, you got to get the key to open the door. It reminds me of that uh, uh, that one game we have on the Coco that where you have to pick up the keys and climb the ladders and stuff like that. I forgot what it's called. Well, Drag Downland. There's Downland. Not, not yeah. Downland, but there's another one where you where you're in. You have like these brick walls, and you climb up and down ladders, and you have. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Yeah. Matthew says this looks better than Mario Maker. <laughs> yeah, I bet they had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, that's cool. These are 10-year-old kids making games. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, that's better than anything I made at 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Very yeah. cool. All right, so uh, two new packs. The AGD hits, they just keep coming. Yeah, and they're available on the Dragon uh, x but they're also available on the Coco, so you can right. just put them right, right in. And you, um, you can download an individual disc of each pack, or you can download the big mega packs that um, that have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, next up, we got uh, Bard Vanden Acker uh, releasing an Indiegogo campaign to raise money for a museum in the Netherlands. Okay. Uh, looks like there's about two months to go. Uh, they're looking to raise about twenty twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and he wants a uh, he wants his museum to be fully interactive, so up to two hundred old older computers that you can play on. Okay. Oh, uh, the link to it. the the link to that is here, right? Yeah, I think we should probably support that. I think Coco Talk should support this. Yeah. All right. So, um, cool. Yeah, we've had Bart on, and we've seen he's got a Facebook page, and yeah, they've got all original hardware, not only on uh, machines that we would see in the U.S., but also a lot of uh, other ones from uh, all around the world, but obviously in Europe, and even some ones from Russia and, and other places like that. So um, 
a lot of neat machines. It's all real hardware and pristine condition, and they're all working machines you can come in and see. Yeah. yeah. There's the, uh, and it is, it is a physical museum. It's a brick-and-mortar building that you can walk into and put your hands on all this vintage equipment. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. We got um, Todd Wallace uh, showing off a program he's made, uh, which is uh, an 80 column mode Coco 3 text editing tool. So you can draw on uh, you can draw on the screen with your keyboard, and you use the mouse or you use your um, cursor keys to move the cursor. You just draw in colors or letters, and then you can save it out to a disk. Yeah, he was on our uh, programming talk last week and was talking about this. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool tool. Dragon Bites. Yep. We got uh, Floppy Days released the podcast um, with Randy Kindig, uh, episode 92. It features a uh, interview with Dave Land. Uh, is it Lagerquist? Lagerquist. Lagerquist, Lagerquist, or Lagerquist. Yeah. yeah, he worked for C Load for the Model 1 through 3, and then started Chromaset, the first tape based magazine for Coco back in the early 80s. Um, and he's got a lot of great stories on this podcast. That's cool. Yeah, definitely need to listen to that. Uh, yeah, and, and I think when Randy posted this thing, he's saying that he actually recorded this interview like two years ago. Yeah. And so he yep. was saying that, you know, it's, you know, I've had this one in my back pocket for two years, but the nature of this show is pretty timeless. So since we're talking about things that happened 30 years ago anyways, right? <laughs> so, but this one just aired. So this, this should be of interest to uh, us on both sides of the Tandy family, right? So on the TRS-80 line and on the Coco line. Um, yep. Yeah, Randy's, Randy is one of the original retro podcasting guys. He's like the godfather of retro podcasting just about. Uh, Floppy Days has been around a long time. Cool stuff. All right. All right. Moving on, we got... Um... Oh, yeah. Paul Fiscarelli yeah. points out that that guy, he's the one who coined the phrase Coco. Uh, Dave? Dave, Dave Langerquist, or Kist, uh. yeah. He's the guy who um, termed the coined the phrase Coco. He's the one who came up with that, yeah. Very good. Yeah, so that'll probably be in the interview, so you might want to listen to that, just for that, to hear the origin of Coco. <laughs> Great. So we got uh, Tony Jewell uh, posting uh, some photos from the Dragon Meetup 2019 uh, at the uh, Center for Computing History in Cambridge, England. Uh, a lot of good stuff yeah so, yeah so let's let's just pull, go back to that first one let's look at the group here for just a second let's see if i i don't know everybody in the uk but i want to see if i recognize anybody okay in the far left with the dragon the black dragon t-shirt with the red wings on it that's karen inscombe the author of xroar so far left um if you move your mouse over there for just a second i recognize karen right there okay that's karen okay somewhere in here too is is steve uh, Bamford, Bosco, who made Flag and Bird and who's working on that new Japanese-style game. Uh, so I am i don't quite recognize Steve just yet. but um, there, he there he is. There he is. Okay, there's he Steve. A, uh, yeah. Some kind of an Intel shirt. Okay, cool. Um, so I don't recognize everybody by face, but there's a few who we have, right? So that's yeah. cool. So this is like their Coco Fest. This is like Dragon Fest, right? So this is the Dragon Meetup. They do it once a year. And this looks like a pretty good turnout. So let's look at some more of these pictures here. Yeah. Neat. That's uh, the black dragon. Yeah. Uh, dark dragon 32 in dark. That's cool. Yeah. And these, these are the real dragons, not our, like our Tano dragons are the U.S. versions of these. But the, ours run on, you know, 110, 60 hertz. These are the 220, 50 hertz dragons. Um mm -hmm. The these, sucker, these suckers hum when you turn them on, or <laughs> 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 you're making it sound like they're they have gravitas. <laughs> yeah, gravitas. <laughs> Look at this thing here. Now, was that, is this a prototype for a Dragon Pro or something professional with two three and a half inch floppies? Yeah, it was. Prototype. Um, that looks cool. Never manufactured. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, wish we could see the sign there a little better. Yeah, the would have been good. Okay, we see. I see a speech sound pack down there. So a couple of yeah. in a uh, orchestra ninety. 
meat mouths. Yeah. Okay. So it's nice to know that we got some cocoa peripherals that are interchangeable. Yeah. Got some spaghetti wire on the yeah. dragon there. Some dragon cartridges there. I, I've actually got some dragon joysticks that are new in the box that I got from Matt Witt about four years ago at a Cocoa Fest. He bought a, a Look, container. Like them out. black ones? Like them black ones up there? Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. Like in the top right-hand corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got some of those new in the box. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, there is – there's that's Steve, right? So that's his new game that he's working on that's kind of looks like kind of like a Mario style game. It's also using the Game Master cartridge. Uh, I can't pronounce the name. It's Japanese sounding, but he's got a channel for it in Discord too. So if you want to talk to Steve about this. Well, what, what are these uploading systems here? Is uh, this the, those, those look like Famicons or something. I don't know what the hell those things are. So is his game a clone of this Famicom game? No, no. It's an original game he's working on that looks like oh. a Mario style game. That's uh, interesting. But yeah, those things kind of look like Famicons. I don't know what the hell they are. What is he playing it on? Uh, I see he's touching a keyboard on the right there, so it must be another Dragon system. Or I don't, yeah, honestly, I don't know. That don't look like Yeah, maybe these are unrelated. Yeah, Yeah, those could just be completely unrelated. I think he's trying to make us. Okay, that's the system there. So I don't know what that system is, but it's got. That's a. Sorry, Bruce, you're breaking up. Well, go ahead. That's a Coco clone of some sort there. Okay. Coco oh, yeah. clone. Here in the comments it says yeah. a Brazilian Coco Brazilian. clone. Okay, Brazilian Coco clone. Okay, the CP400, Color two, Color Computer 2, Brazilian Coco clone. All right, so this game's working on that with the Sega Joypad adapter. That's cool. Who Fujitsu Micro. Nice. Look at that. And that's got, has that got like a VDG on it? Or is that a Coco VGA on it? That looks like Coco VGA with a mixed case. Uh, hard to say. Huh. Interesting. Okay, there's, there's, the there's Steve's game again. Oh, that's oh, Flagenberg. The okay, there's yeah. the Alice, the red Alice, yeah. yeah. So they've got a white and a silver Coco. So Coco 1, Coco 2. Uh, Richard Atkinson on Facebook saying he's playing it on a Pro Logica CP400 Mark II. Thank you, Richard. Um... Yeah, this is really neat. I like that laser system. Looks pretty cool. Back. What's that thing you're pointing at right now? The the wide thing on the bottom there. Yeah, it's got what, some kind of a T- pen. Oh, what the hell that is? That looks Light really pen. cool though. Is that a little it's printer like a built in? Pen thing. I don't know. Oh, is that like a thermal a printer, like a receipt printer on the left there or something? That's or a tape. It could be. It looks tape. like maybe a tape cartridge. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Where, where's the control for this? Tap. Tab. So apparently this is some kind of a mouse or tablet. Uh, okay, so. maybe it uses a, maybe that's a light pen for a screen too. Light, you never yeah, know. It's a light yeah. Pen. Oh, could be. Could be. You store right. it right inside there, and you drop the flap down. You see it flaps. Oh open. yeah, that's a flap. That's yeah. a little cover, so you would stick the light pen in there. Man, that was a pretty and advanced it, system. It, it has Those a yellow cool. enter key, a which yellow. is strange. So, so you don't miss it. Yeah. It doesn't have that, to be retro brighted. That's the actual color of it. <laughs> that's, that's a family. All those machines there are inspired by the Coco. Those are all related. Yeah. Well, except the Alice's. Well, Alice well, isn't no, inspired is, by the MC10. MC10. Which came yeah, it's a, it looks like an MC10 clone. Well, the Alice was it was at a Tandy. Um, I think Tandy which, sold it off when they when they lost. You know, they've lost any interest in making the MC10 anymore. I think they sold off the rights to whoever makes Alice. Okay. So it's the bastard son. Uh, yeah. It's it's the French cousin. <laughs> uh, there's a nice dragon, and there's that prototype dragon with the two floppy drives. That looks. See, those are the dragon joysticks I have. Those two black ones. Mm-hmm, They're mm-hmm. in the center. I've got two of those new in the box. Yeah. Here it says Dragon Beta. Dragon Beta. A Beta. Very cool. All right, we're pulling up oh, the yeah. hoods. We've we got, we got the hoods oh, up. Man. Yeah, look at these hot rods here, huh? It's, this show is no longer kid-friendly. Yeah, yeah. That might be a Coco VGA in there on that one in the bottom. There's some type of add-on board there. Uh, just right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, that could be a Coco VGA or some other add-on item. I'm not sure. I don't know the innards of dragons very well. Um, but it looks yeah. different than the other ones. So this is the process of rocking the 8-bit world, right? Rocking now. the 8-bit world, yeah. So that's that, those are our uh, European uh, family actually, members. 
it actually looks like the 80 column board that's oh, being okay. right now for the dragons. So it looks like it's about the right size. Okay, 80 column board? I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Does, does anybody know, like, if you get a dragon from the UK, I know that the, the power adapter is going to be different, but if you had a Tano Dragon power adapter, could you plug it into one of these things and power it up? Or I think they're close, but I'm not sure. I have a Tano Dragon, but I don't have any of the European ones. So. Yeah. We're going to see if the dragon smoke comes out. Yeah, release <laughs> the dragon smoke. That's yeah. a good question. I don't know enough about electronics and... Uh... Okay, well, here's had, Richard uh, Atkinson. That's the external character set board from the Dragon 200E. Um, Dragon 200E. Okay, so it's a different character set, Rom. Uh, it's, that response is probably out of sync to what we were looking at in the past, but still, we're getting nice. some feedback there. Um, no, right. cool. What I was talking about is called the Dragon Plus. The Dragon uh, Plus, okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, move on. We got... Uh, the Coco Pick editor from Jason again, Jason Pittman. Um, this is real interesting. It uh, it'll take your picture, any kind of picture, and then bring it down to the sixteen colors or four colors, depending on what you select here. Two colors, um, so you can you can you can then save it out and, and display it on your Coco. Wow, that looks cool. Yeah, it's got a compiler, uh, or I guess I don't know what you'd call it a um, I like that palette code picker. Generator, I guess is what you call generator. it. Okay. Yeah, so you can uh, output it as uh, CMOX C. I think it might have also output to assembly. Uh, Man, that Back to the Future looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Well, and here you're showing how you can modify it so you can make it look even better. Oh. You try. I think. I think what it does is it does a best guess and then okay. you go in and reassign all the colors. Okay. Great Scott. Yeah, great Scott. Hey, real quick too, go back to the Dragon tab for the Dragon Meetup tab for just one second. I just I just want to make uh, kind of a public uh, statement to to our brethren in the UK and the EU. Um, you know, I, I I know in the past I have tried to invite you guys to come on the show. I just want I want the Dragon folks to know that we uh, think of you guys and we i don't always remember to mention dragon stuff because i don't follow the face grip book group as far as i can but we're going to try to make a more conscious effort to be more inclusive of the dragon community because um listen we're we all love the same thing we're into vintage we're into retro and this is all coco related right so for our dragon folk we love you you are always welcome to join us on the show and we will definitely try to make a more conscious effort to cover more uh, dragon content uh, and, and I would really love to have you guys come on I know there's a big time difference for, for us at two o'clock it's 7 p.m. for you guys but hopefully that's not too late I mean Nick Morenti's it's four in the morning for him so <laughs> just know that you guys are always welcome to come on the show whenever you want to and and we will try to be a little bit more inclusive it's never been intentional it's just been um, just bad negligence to not re remember to cover dragon content. So we're going to try to do a better job of doing that. Sorry about that, Eric. Uh, back, as you were. Great. Um, yeah, I don't know if there was anything else. Uh, you guys that is really to... cool, though. That's a super cool tool. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of programmatically taking a high-color, high-resolution image and then generating a Coco equivalent with only 16 colors or possibly less. Yeah, up, up to 16 colors. You can bring it down. You can use uh, dithering, two different methods of dithering. Uh, you can set it to RGB or composite mode. You can do two color graphics, different screen modes. You can uh, change where the cropping occurs or you can set it to fit. I think he was still working on some of these features so they might not all be ready. Uh, but, that is uh, so impressive. But it works for the most part. Yeah. Here's, here's the code that it generates. Man, that's so cool. Thanks for doing that, Jason. And Jason, if you can join us now, please join us. And if not, we definitely um, we definitely look forward to having you on our screening party tomorrow night. <laughs> James Jones says, you got to admire that kind of dedication 4 a.m. Well, Nick's just a nut. But, yeah, we appreciate Nick's nuttiness. <laughs> <laughs> And then it outputs to a Cocoa, and then it's loading it up. Yep, so yep. Here... He used Visual Studio, probably with his uh, plugins, to uh, okay. to just kind of automatically load it up. 
Okay, so James Giffendaffer is saying that that machine with the light pen is a Thompson T07. The black machine was on the same table was an M05. Okay, and he's pointing to a, th- a Wikipedia article for that. I, I think they're uh, 6809 based uh, French okay. machines. Okay. Whoa. Oh, right there. Here. Les 6809 in Francais. Uh, I, I don't think they're Cocos as such. They don't have the 6847, as you can okay. see by some of those pictures, but they're 6809 based. Okay, so they still have the same heart and soul as our Cocos. So I think, cool. yeah. Uh, I'd have to look it up. But I, okay. I seem to recall, yeah. We now have a correction. He says it's a Thompson T07. Okay, not uh, Thompson, T- Thompson T07. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So I personally would love to make one of these events. It, this requ- this is going to require a lot more planning. Like it's hard enough for me to plan for a Cocoa Fest that's only uh, you know a day or two's drive. But when getting a passport, booking international airfare, and all that kind of stuff. But I would like to make an assertive effort to get to the UK next year for a Dragon Meetup. Uh, that'd be kind of cool to have a Cocoa Talk remote from there. So it's on my wish list. It's on my to do list. Uh, Maybe when we get closer, I'll reach out to a few folks, and maybe if I have a place to crash and don't have to pay for a hotel, that would make it a little bit easier pill to swallow to get there too. Um, but yeah, I would love to to attend one of these things and just meet everybody across the pond, you know. Uh, yeah, you, that that's a better zoom in there. You can see how the little door opens up with that light pen in there. That's such a cool. Uh, yeah, that does look more like a cassette loader there too, right? The T07. Yeah, Thompson. I'm not even familiar with the company Thompson, to be honest with you. It's a French company. They mili- do military stuff and they do mm. computers. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that's a custom cassette or what, because I don't see the uh, the tape um, spindle. Play controls, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no control. Okay, James Diffendaffer says that it's a 1 megahertz-ish 6809 with a different video chip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. I think it does 16 colors and everything. It's uh... So under that door, could that be a uh, ROM cartridge instead? Uh, possibly. It could be a cartridge Maybe. slot, too. Who knows? Who knows what's under the door, right? Uh, James is saying that uh, Thompson made monitors as well. Okay. Yeah, they did. Interesting. Cool. What else we got in news there, Mr. Well, uh, that's about all I've got. I know there's some uh, community updates. I don't know if you want to cover those. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll take a break and then we'll come back. Actually, before we take our break, we'll go ahead and stop sharing. Um, and we'll just come back to the to the panel. Uh, so right now, the so the main topic for today was, and Bruce, are you with us? Hello. I'll turn on my camera. The Bruce is here. Howdy. Bruce. Okay, DeBruce. D. Bruce Moore has joined us uh, on the panel right now. We have got Nick Marota, Eric Canales from Glenside. We've got Mark Overholzer, Ron Delvo, Brian Weasler, Mark Bosley, Jason Riker. DeBruce is here. Of course, there's Greg, uh, Nick Marentes, and David Ladd. So, Bruce, are you excited about our screening party tomorrow? Very excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. You know, I, I, was, I was realizing the last little while that um, while it's great to put something out and, and have individuals enjoy it, uh, you know, on their own, there's really something about this. Really, is a community. It's community effort. Co- the Coco Forever uh, story is a community effort, and it's. I think it's enjoyed best with other community people. Okay. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, us all kind of getting together and and uh, you know enjoying listening and, and even hashing out some of the, the crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah. The crazy ideas that that. You know, well, could this have really worked? You know, I mean, obviously, time travel doesn't work as far as we know. Um, but just, you know, it's fun to wonder what if, you know, right. what if Andy somehow managed to get the jump on the other guys and, and how could that have happened and all that? So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and um, it's, looking, it's looking good as far as getting, um, I think we've got a good chance to get all the cast. Okay. Buddy on the show. I'm, I'm okay. working just uh, with a few other people to see if that can work out. So. Right, right, right. So what this is going to be is it's going to be a private screening, so it's not live. So the only people who are going to be able to partake in this are those who are on the call. Now, we're still going to use this same tool, Zoom, that we're using now so we can all be together and listen and talk. And we're going to listen to it. It's not going to be live stream, so it's going to be a private party, a private screening. Bruce, the creator, is going to be here. As many of the 
Um, actors who are on it will we'll try to compile as possible. We'll listen to it together. When Bruce and I were um, talking about this last week, kind of getting my ducks in a row, I realized there's some things I didn't even experience myself because what I ended up doing was I put all the audio pieces on a stick to listen to in my car. So I listened to the 10 episodes, but I missed two videos and I didn't play any of the software. So there's a lot of interactive software that comes with it too. So even for me, there's going to be some things that I have, I'm not going to be seeing for the first time. So that's going to be kind of cool. Um, and it's just going to be a fun time of us getting together. And uh, so what we did is we basically said, if you obviously, if you were in the production, we want you to be there. If you're on the panel of Cocoa Talk, we'd like you to be there. If you are a patron of the show, we've invited all the patrons and we've gotten some feedback from those who want to. And then we basically said, if you if if you are none of the above or if you have not purchased and also if you purchased it. Right. So if you're a consumer, you're also invited. Right. So if you haven't bought it, if you weren't on it and you're not a patron. And you'd still like to be on the private party. We had a little contest where we said, send us an email and then we'll draw it live on the air and we'll announce the winners. And so I have a list of everybody in no particular order who has requested in one way, shape or form or another to be on it. And I'll just go ahead and go over that list right now, if that's OK with you, Bruce. Yep. OK, so in no particular order, we have Terry Steggy. We have Eric Canales, and we have Blair Leduc, or Blair Leduc. I don't know how to pronounce that, but Blair is both a patron of the show, and I believe he also recently purchased it as well. He doubled down on that, right? Um, we have Ron Delvo. We have Bill Noble, eh? Uh, Mark D. Overholzer. Richard Lorbieski. John Lowry. Uh, Nick Morota. you got to count him three times. Nick Morota. Nick Morota. <laughs> Nick Morota. <laughs> Uh, so we got him. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that makes nine. Then we have Brendan Donahue, Terry Steen, David Ladd. Well, David Ladd's in the production at some point, right? Uh, Ron yes. Klein has requested to be on. He says he's got to work, but hopefully he'll be able to make it. Jason Reichert. Jason, are you going to be there? That was Jason, that was your cue to do your bad accent. I guess he missed it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Jason will be there. Stop right there. Stop right um, there. Stop right there. That's right. Okay. Uh, DeBruce is going to be there. That's you, right, DeBruce? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Grant Leete will be there. Paul Fiscarelli. Uh, Jason Pittman, who actually submitted a reason why he wants to be on. Uh, so Jason's on the list. And then Brian Weasler is on the list, too. And I know I've missed a few crew members, cast and crew members. But... Um, now, I've just got a new one, too. So Dan Loyal says he would like to attend. And, and Paul Fiscarelli. So Dan Loyal has now emailed us, too. Uh, thank you, Dan Loyal. Alexander Wallace, our friend from Mexico. So let me go ahead and just add two more names to the list now. So we have Dan Loyal. The party continues to grow, right? I think that's 22 so far. And Alexander... Uh, Alexander Wallace would like to attend. That's 21, 22 people right now. That's going to be a big, big freaking right. party, right? Right. And I think I've got one, two, three, possibly four more cast members. Okay. Yeah, that, so. Right. So there's cast members that you know about that we don't even know that aren't from the community, right? So you've got some of yeah. your, right. So uh, will them, will possibly some of those be with us? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and well, Jacob, uh, Jacob's going to catch Jacob. the first part anyway. And yeah. Uh, my wife will she voice she did two of the significant voices on there so uh i'll, I'll try and get her to, to make an appearance and then yeah i've got okay, mrs bruce uh, mrs bruce, mrs. bruce. And, uh, opposed, and... opposed to my insignificant role <laughs> stop right there jason uh... <laughs> and then uh there's the uh the uh my uh nephew ethan who plays the guy in the mail room and okay. that's kind of it uh, hoping to get him on and then there's my niece alicia who does um she does a few voices she's well i shouldn't say what they all are because i don't want to give away the <laughs> some yeah the, true true true, true. Okay. but she, she's got some very she had some very tough technical lines to do okay um, really she really uh were any of them stop right there no no, okay. no nothing quite that hard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, hi oh oh well, it's so going to be. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, well over 20, 
Maybe we'll, you know, maybe by showtime we'll hit 30 people. Let's see. That's uh, going to be quite the party, right? Yep. Uh, this is, is the most inclusive private screening, you know? Yeah, it's actually going to be bigger than any episode of Coco Talk we've ever had <laughs> as far as the uh, gathered panel. Um, and so, yeah, it's not going to be live stream, but we are going to record it. And once that has been done being recorded, well, then it's up to DeBruce what he wants to do with that recording as far as... I'll re do some heavy editing to make sure it's, you know... All right. <laughs> now, since since this is going to be in the evening, and I believe most of us are adults, is uh, it would be okay to have an adult beverage while we enjoy this production? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Okay. So, and, and is it encouraged to have an adult beverage? <laughs> it may enhance so, I, I, I think the truth is enjoy responsibly. Enjoy, yes, enjoy you know. cocoa forever responsibly. That's right. It's like WD forty on a bolt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Alexander, you're in Mexico. I want you to bring in some good tequila, some of the good stuff with the worm in it, uh, and maybe some good uh, Dos Equis beer or whatever else it is you guys drink down there. I don't have no idea. Uh, all we know about here is Corona and Dos Equis. Right? Stay thirsty, my friend. Uh, all right, cool. So it's a big party. It's going to be a huge party tomorrow. So the list continues to grow. Yeah, um, and, you know, if you just view this episode, like, you know, Coco Talk, like, tomorrow afternoon, send in an email. You want to come join the show? Like, you can come. Yeah, yeah, us. yeah. So if you're, if you're not yeah. catching this live and you catch this later in the evening or early Sunday morning and you still want to join... Send an email to Coco Talk at Coco Talk Live. You're catching those too, right, Bruce? You catch, you see those when they come in. Do you see the ones that see go what? to Coco Talk? Oh, oh yes, yeah, I'm seeing those too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The uh, oh, uh, who was it? Uh, was it Jason who said he gave a whole bunch of good reasons? Like, yeah. Do you want me to read those on the air? <laughs> yeah. Those. Yeah. Those were really good. Let me find that email from Jason Pittman. So hold on one second. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Points. Points is, there for creativity. Yeah. Is okay. there going to be a, a Coco Forever intro and outro on this thing? Mm, oh, we would need. I would need to get that from Bruce. If you send me the files and put them in the Google Drive, we could do that. Yeah. Well, me, every uh, clip we play has it audibly. It's true. They um, do. Yeah. So, hey, yeah, uh, hey, John, John Laurie Stinnett says hello from Oregon. Okay, so here's Jason Pittman's uh, response. He says, um, "I saw the post about Coco Forever, and it says send in your reason why you should be a guest." So I would like to enumerate the various reasons why I should be a guest. Number one, I am fairly new. I'm a fairly new old Coco fan spending a stupid amount of time playing with my new Coco 2 and 3 and various related goodies. <laughs> uh, number, you belong with us. Yes. <laughs> Free slope. <laughs> number two, you guys are fun to watch. Okay. Sucking up always goes far. Uh, <laughs> Number three, back in, in like 1988, I made a Coco 3 BBS to pick up chicks. <laughs> Who does that? Right? <laughs> Keep reading. Yeah. Keep reading. Nobody called it, and it wouldn't have worked if they had, but that's not the point. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Who awesome. says? I'll I tell, tell you a true story, though. I met a girlfriend on my BBS. A girl, you know, not, even back then, not a lot of girls called into BBSs, but there were one, and every single one that called mine, I hit on. So <laughs> I, mean, I was a teenager. What do you want from me? Right. So 1-800. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amy, Amy says BBSs are a great way to get chicks. So if you hey, guys watch, it's going to be after this show, a whole bunch of new BBSs are going to go off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to start a BBS, man, and meet chicks. <laughs> I'm going to score. Yes. <laughs> Because the well, internet's I, old news, you gotta. Yeah, I mean, I ran a BBS as a kid in Miami. I was like 19 years old, and I hit on every. And, and honestly, you never knew if they were actually females, you know, and online then and now, you still don't know, right? But I went on dates, and I met a girl who I ended up dating for gosh, a year and a half. That was my girlfriend that I met on my BBS. So it is possible. Um, so he made a BBS to pick up chicks, um, but he says it didn't work. But that's not the point. And last but not least, reason number four. I'm good at color baseball. <laughs> so uh, these are excellent, excellent reasons on why uh, you're definitely, uh, you're more than welcome. 
<laughs> to to uh, be with us on the screening. Thanks, Jason, for doing. Thanks well, for that project. I don't know how he had so little luck with the BBS. I mean, he's athletic. He he's smart. He can run a, his own server. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you, you obviously have to have your own phone line, so that means you have to have some sort of uh, dispensable, dispensable income. You know, like I need, I need my own phone line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or he's resourceful and stole it from his neighbors. Ooh. Yeah, true. Ooh. Why, why is Coco Talk so, you know, attractive to women? Uh, certainly not for, because of the panel. And then maybe the, <laughs> maybe the Bruce, the Bruce might get a few people in here. I'm not sure about yeah, the rest yeah, of yeah. us slugs <laughs> well now we got nick morenti's here nick morenti's good looking guy look at that picture there 1970 never looked so good so that's right <laughs> <laughs> so hey, uh, uh, sorry, sorry nick <laughs> yeah you know when i i uh, I, I got something uh, very live uh, that i could uh, do here I, I had an idea f uh, for uh another coco type song okay i've only got one line and one little bit of melody, but it, it could turn into something. Would you like to be the, the first people to hear it? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Like, this was like half an hour ago. I'll grab my guitar. All right. This is awesome. Yes. The so lovely another... and talented DeBruce Moore is going to talk I, I behind can't find, I can't find my ukulele, so this will have to do. Uh... We are... Coco Talk Live Unplugged. We are rocking the 8-bit world. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's another 8-bit thing. So here we go. So, I mean, it's going to go by real fast, guys, because it's like one line. Okay, here you go. Wait, can you hear me okay? Is the guitar yeah. like way louder than me? No, that's fine. Nice balance. Okay. Eight bits are more than enough. Eight bits are more than enough. I learned something about getting, they got man to the moon and something, something, something. Yeah, something, something. <laughs> I love the something, something part. That's that's Eight really prolific. Love, put man on the moon, something, something, something. <laughs> Eight bits are more than enough. I love Eight it. Eight bits are more than enough. That's a, that's a tagline used by Joe in Ohio, uh, Joe's computer museum. Eight is bits that right? Of, Eight bits is enough. Yep. Okay. Oh, well, I said his, his more thing more is more than, than enough. enough. Yeah. yeah. It's more than enough. We'll you see what he did there? He made it his own. Put a little spin yeah. on it, a little twist there. So, so maybe we'll have a, a sort of a full featured song before too long. I, when we were talking about themes for uh, the 40th anniversary, I mean, you can sing happy birthday. I don't know. But that's what came to my mind anyway. Eight so, bits are more than enough. Eight bits are more than enough. And you can, eight bits are more than enough. So why can't I find any eight bit BBS love? Yeah. It fit it in there. Somehow. Eight bits are more than enough with sixteen bit registers. You gotta throw in the sixteen bit register space so somehow. So <laughs> Well don't forget eight is enough to fill your life with love. Ah. So. Octopus love. <laughs> I'm not sure I like the sound. Danger, of that. danger. Well now octal is eight. Yes, that's true. Yes. Octo. Oh, that's true. Octal. Yeah, octal. Come on. I was thinking. <laughs> And maybe, the, we'll see. maybe maybe when it comes to screening time tomorrow, maybe I'll have uh, another line to another it, so. another verse or two. Yeah, we'll see. Or, That's well, cool. I gotta, I gotta finish a chorus even. So, eight bits like it. are more than enough. That's yes, got a did, nice that's the earworm, right? Yeah, it is. It's a good hook right there. You get you get that hook, and then if you can build around it, you're, you're yeah good. yeah. I mean, really, the chorus is it. Everything else is fluff, anyways. The verses are just the fluff you get to repeat yeah. the chorus. So pretty much. Um, yeah. Eight bits are more than enough. Yeah, it's already stuck in my head, man. Okay, we'll we'll get Stevie to do one of the. You can do one of the choruses or something. We'll get yeah. you to sing it. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, okay, James. It's just more than enough to send a man to the moon. It ain't that tough. James Diffendaffer says it took more than eight bits to put men on the moon. Oh, it took really? More, what did it take? A ninth bit? What are we talking about here? Uh, How many bits? Was it a nine bit processor, James? Come on. Pluto still uh, counts. That was, 60, <laughs> that was 68. That was 68. Really? They had more than eight bit machines? Well, it, it, it could have been all custom technology, anyways. You know, we it can probably take poetic license. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh. Well, Ima okay. imagine. Well, did, hey, Bruce, did you hear Coco Thoughts number six? Were you here for that? I sure did. Did you like that one? <laughs> I did. Yes. <laughs> I just, you know, those, uh, the, the trouble with those, some of those Coco Thoughts is you really have to know the, some of the recent history to catch 
the the absolute cleverness of those mm, subtle mm. cleverness not overt yes. cleverness no yeah very subtle very you know unlike that nightmare highway which slaps you right between the eyes which i love <laughs> <laughs> nightmare highway nightmare highway oh. yes <laughs> good stuff on my way to davenport Is all right your, your nightmare <laughs> Well, it's a couch. That's so a couch. <laughs> we have covered anyway. uh, we have covered a lot of things, and I feel like what we're we're are we, is, is it only been not even an hour and a half? Is that Correct. the time right now? It's three. Yep. It's not, I honestly I, I feel like we've covered a lot. I feel like we're almost out of show, and I feel like we have not been here long enough. But. Um, so we've announced the winners. We've are, are you know who the current lineup of participants. We're already pushing thirty people for the party tomorrow night. And by the way, Amy, if you're still out there, I don't know if Neil Blanchard uh, saw the invitation that we sent out, but he's invited to join us too. Neil was on the um, was part of the cast and crew of Coco Forever. I did send him a, uh, an invitation through the Facebook event. I don't know if he saw it or confirmed to that or not. Do you know Bruce if Neil confirmed attendance through the Facebook event? <laughs> that i've had but i sure hope he makes it yeah yeah um he gives a real i i love one of his deadpan lines uh i, I just yeah there's one line there I just every every time i hear neil say it i love it i love it i'll point it out I'll point okay it out. okay okay yeah cool stuff um all right how about we take another we'll take another break and i'm not sure what else we want to talk about Do, does anybody uh, have anything else they want to talk about yeah ron Delbo, go ahead do you ever do any more of the um, people that contribute? You know the um, the uh, the, the patrons, the, the yeah. patrons. Yeah, we'll do that before the break. Good, good call there, De Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Chad. Uh, 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 so Chad says that's Nick's neighbor, Chad. Chad Cunnington. He says Bruce needs to get that rap song going. I got ninety nine problems, but eight bit eight bit ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good stuff. Keep the ideas coming in. Who knows? This, this Never know. Fun. That would be interesting to hear uh, to hear Bruce do a rap song. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to mention our patron sponsors. We're going to take a commercial break. We're going to come back and see if there's anything left to talk about today or if we just need to put a fork in this one. All right. So here we go. I want to say thank you to the patrons who, uh, who, who spend money every month to help support all of the hosting and production costs that come along with this fine quality program. So we'd like to say thank you to Al Hartman and Alan Huffman and Blair Leduc and Brendan Donahue and his Coco VGA project at CocoVGA.com and Brian Joyce and his cool retro blog called Extructus.com, Fedor Stamen and DeBruce Moore with his projects Forest of Doom at FOD.GraceNote.ca and CocoForever.GraceNote.ca, Davey Mitchell, Diego, Diego's got a cool site, yaccs.info, yet another color computer site.info. Disney Saints fan, Eric Canales, and he's got a cool project site called color-computer.com, and Grant Leedy and Jason Downs and Ken Reichard. He's got a cool site called Ken, C-A-N, Ken, K-E-N, makeit.com. Kyle Etter, Malfunct, Paul Fiscarelli, Freno Mythic, Richard Lorbieski of Boyson Technologies, B O Y S O N Tech.com, Ripen Peach, Rob Inman, Steve Bjork, Terry Steggy, The Backyard Shed Gang, Tom C, and Tom S. We'll be right back after these words. Right. This Christmas, Tandy has a very special offer. A family color computer pack to take away at a very special price. This family computer comes complete with software and costs an incredible $449, a saving of $241.69. It's powerful, educational, and ideal for the young and young at heart. The easy way to start computing. The color computer family pack from Tandy. Get it while it's hot. Tandy, the biggest electronic store in Australia. As you start your journey to Coco Fest, you notice the road ahead is littered with rogue furniture. You realize you are driving on the Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. The new game for the Tandy Color Computer 1, 2, and 3. Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. Stunning low resolution visuals. 
digital to analog converted sound. 100% machine language and basic. What are they saying about Nightmare Highway? Nightmare Highway. Steve B. York says, of all the games released this year, this is one of them. Elkert S. Boyle says, this will not be on my sight. Nick Marionette says, crikey, look at the size of that croc. Get your complimentary copy of Nightmare Highway. Nightmare Highway. At cancanmakeit.com. If you got it for free, you paid too much. Coming soon. All situations depicted in this trailer actually happened. This true story has been anonymized to protect the guilty. Starting in the dead of winter, a group of bored teenagers, blue stuff up, learned code cracking, learned phone freaking, hijacked and hacked. No system was safe. No one could catch them, or so they thought. story at the dawn of the internet system hacked <laughs> Terry Steen says I don't have to play Nightmare Highway I lived it <laughs> that's right it says inspired by actual events the actual events of Terry Steen on his way to Cocoa Fest this year Ah, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. All right, guys. Well, we're out of show. What else can we talk about? Or do we put a fork in it? Anybody have anything you guys want to um, philander or fillet here that we should toss about and talk about? Audience? Well, we're allowed to have a short week. I mean, it's we are hour. allowed to have a short show. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I figured I'd throw it to the panel, and I would throw it to the people listening and viewing right now. Uh, anything that it's that we should possibly discuss right now. And I also had created a um, had created an area where we could throw out potential host topics. And so maybe there might be one of those times where I will look into one of these. We have a little area where we have mentioned some host topic discussions. Oh, oh, there I don't know if this will come. I don't know if this will come through or not. But uh, I had a lot of fun with this one uh, this <laughs> this past week here. I changed the uh, the background picture on my iPhone or my iWatch. Okay. To uh, I took a picture of the Gimme chip, <laughs> and okay. I stuck it I stuck it as a background, and I put that I put that on the Facebook that I upgraded my iWatch, and uh, a lot of people seem to have got a kick out of that one. That was kind of that's fun cool. One, so. <laughs> I think uh, sometimes in different intervals, maybe we could uh, cover some people who have gotten their new coco and don't really know what to do or where to go and just kind of review that there's an sdc that there's a yeah uh, true archive that there's uh, joysticks there's uh yeah yeah people making new games there's you know kind of review things because uh i don't know there's maybe there's some people lurking that uh, kind of interested kind of looking to find out you know what can i do with my machine yeah, you know, good call. Had, good had call. Years ago, there's uh, old rainbows out there somewhere that you can look through and get inspired with. And there's uh, Ed Snyder making all kinds of neat new stuff. And they, maybe they haven't heard of him. Or yeah, yeah, and that that's a great point to bring up. And 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 I think there's one answer to that. Uh, not the only answer, but an answer to that question is if if and I could if I could be uh, a shameful plug time, but I. I, I had the same questions and concerns. That's why I started the website, I'm a coconut.com. So it's I am a, I'm a, I am a coco, C O C O N U T.com. And for that very reason, when I got into community about four or five years ago, I had to discover things. And so part of my voyage of discovery was to also document these things. So, uh, so a good place to go, not the only place, but a place to go is I'm a coconut.com because I do have links to the Facebook group, I do have links to Ed Snyder's website. 
I have links to the Coco Crew podcast and the and the mailing list. So it is it was it's intended to be your quote unquote one stop shop for all your color computer needs. Obviously, it's not the only resource, but I have tried to include as many as I've become aware of, and I do on the website say if you know of anything that's not here please send me an email and i'll add it to that site um i even made a page on there that's called start here and if you go to start here it mentions a few things you know you get the coco sdc you know um get your stuff from the color computer archive and here's a list of some emulators and things like that so um that's a great great point um and so yeah, maybe a lot of people when they buy their um, coco off like ebay and stuff it comes without manuals and uh, you can get manuals off of uh, the archive correct you can so or is there something better i mean is there a place to go that would explain how to get started programming or you know what books would i want to you know collect to start reading you mean to... like a video series okay oh, hey, there's a good idea okay, okay. there's yeah. uh, youtube stuff there is, there is. So actually, this has become our host discussion. So the host discussion is now, thanks to Ron Delvo, the host discussion topic is called Coco Essentials. If you are, if you or someone you know is new to the Coco or needs to know what to do with the Coco, what do we recommend? What are the essential uh, must-haves, must-dos, must-sees right. of color computer stuff? So give us one, Ron, and we'll go around the panel and everybody give us one essential thing to know or do with your Coco. Ron Delvo, you're first. Well, first is the SDC, and then find there's a uh, uh, there's a download you can get that will give you some uh, a bunch of different things, utilities and games and things that you can put on the uh, SD card that goes in the SDC. That gets you started up playing with all kinds of stuff. But if you wanted to do programming and stuff, that's not my league. I don't know much about that. Maybe you guys could help in that right. area. No, on that note, hold on one second. I'm going to zoom in on my camera here and show you guys a close-up. So this is a close-up of the Coco SDC. And so what it is is it's a cartridge that plugs into the cartridge slot of your Coco, and it emulates a floppy disk controller. I took the cover off of my case, right? And so it emulates a, it emulates a floppy disk controller. There you use a normal SD card that plugs inside it. And when it boots up, you, you, um, you can then mount a disk image. And instead of doing things that you would do on an emulator, you can do those things on the real hardware. And there are lots of places to go to get disk images. The Color Computer Archive is one of them, right? And you were mentioning the Ultimate Coco SDC image, I think is something you can get from the archive. This has got a ton of stuff to put on your SD card, right, Ron? Yep, um, correct. So if there was a single must-have item for the Coco, do we all agree it's the Coco SDC? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And you can get this from Ed Snyder. Ed Snyder's website is called The Zipster Zone. Uh, T-H-E-Z-I-P-P-S-T-E-R zone.com. Um, Ed Snyder is the producer of this, but the original designer of the Coco SDC is Darren Atkinson. Right? Um, and it definitely is the single most important product to have for your color computer it, it negates the need for floppy disks however eric canalis was using a real floppy drive to do his archiving project where he took physical real floppies from a floppy drive converted them to disk images that could then be mounted on a <clears throat> coco sdc or an emulator or things like that right so um, now there's also <laughs> solutions for um when you get that coco and you plug it into a tv you're gonna be maybe disappointed because of how it looks depending on what machine you have um you know, channel three and four on a uh, flat screen um, TV looks not pretty decent sometimes because of the fact that uh, nobody's using channel three and four anymore, mm -hmm. which makes makes it cool to use. But um, there are solutions for that, too, that uh, you can learn about. And if you have a little extra money, you can buy those to attach, such as the um, boom. What is it called? The uh, Jason's thing. The uh, so there's the there's yeah. the boomerang excuse me there's the switcheroo Switch. cable right. for the coco 3 rgb um there is the coco vga upgrade kit from brendan donahy which is gives you vga output on the coco ed snyder has got uh, composite mods and s video mods where you can uh, output a coco one or two to have a different cleaner output um the yeah actually the, like you mentioned the channel three or four 
works surprisingly well, especially when you bypass that switch box. The old RF switch box, I feel, was a huge introducer of uh, degradation to the signal quality, right? So the, combined with the fact that we can go direct to our TVs with just a, a coax F connector to RCA adapter, you go straight from your Coco to that. The fact that there is nobody broadcasting on analog anymore, so channel 3 and channel 4 are completely unencumbered with any type of radio noise, um, in, a, in a clean direct cable, the picture and sound is not horrible on that. And that's built into all Coco. So that's a real quick and easy way to get things uh, up there. Uh, so now we have DeBruce Moore holding up some essential manuals, right? And I think Ron mentioned most of these are available on the Color Computer Archive. So you can get them digitally, but nothing beats having a physical paper book that you can hold in your hand and flip the pages through. Uh, so getting started with Color Basic, an important... Um, an important thing to have uh, assembly with uh, so that's the um, William Barden Jr.'s Jr.'s assembly book, right? Yeah, and um, someone said that uh, those books that were made for the Coco um, were actually very, very good. Oh, absolutely, to, absolutely. I learned, I taught myself to program in Basic from those books, and I was a freaking tard. So if I could do it, anybody <laughs> could. All right. Yeah. I, I'd say you should check out the uh, Unraveling Coco series, too. Uh, it has a lot of good hardware information if you're interested in uh, programming yeah. the hardware. The Unraveled? Is that what you said, Eric? Yeah, the Unraveled series of books yeah. has really good information on the hardware. Yeah, and so a lot of things we're referencing now are available on the Color Computer Archive. I believe the link is just the colorcomputerarchive.com. But if it's not, if you go to imacoconut.com, there's links to it there for under resources, right? It doesn't have the word the, but no, yeah, it's just, Oh, it's not the, archive. just colorcomputerarchive.com. Sorry, oh. there's no the. Um, if you're interested in programming in BASIC, again, shameful plug, I did a series on that where I went through most of the chapters, kind of chapter by chapter. Maybe useful to someone. You're getting ready to hold up something there, Brian Weasler. Well, what, what Eric was talking about, the... Uh... Extended color basic unraveled. So these are basically disassemblies of the ROMs, explaining the ROM calls, right? That's right. That's, and and that's that may mean. not sound interesting if you're not interested in this basic or basic, but uh, it's it's got a lot of information on how the hardware actually works. Uh, so even if you're not interested in basic routines, you, you'll you'll get a lot of information about how to program the code. Right, right. The, the uh, Peaks and Pokes is a good resource, too. Yeah, 500 Peaks, Pokes, and Execs, and I believe there was a follow-up to that, too. So there's at least one or two of those. Those are available on the archive. I believe I've got physical copies of those, too. Uh, I remember those back in the day. That's kind of Those were some serious, like, Bible-type things to have for the Coco. Like when you go through it. Library for it there. Yeah, yeah. You, you can find all kinds of things that you can make the cocoa do that you thought, oh, well, that's cool. That, that, that'd be neat. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> um, we're having some 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 suggestions out here. So Alexander Wallace is saying some things like some inter, some introduction to Nitrous Nine, um, which is not which is a great idea. We've had a few Nitrous Nine segments on the show, and Curtis Boyle, who's not with us today, has been working on the Ease of Use project that continues to make Nitrous Nine. A little bit easier to get up and running, and so I would, I would imagine that we'll have more um, revelations on that project as he continues to work on it. Um, yeah, but there is a GUI now, which makes it uh, kind of like uh, you know Windows. A menu loader, yeah. yeah. Right. With the, what's that called? G Shell. Yep. Yeah, so G Shell lets you launch programs by their icons and everything else. So it does make it's kind of like in closer to the to like Windows three point one, right? Where point you have the, it's point and click stuff. Point and click, and and one of the things we saw with Rob Inman is Rob Inman um, is starting to use something called was it called RSB, Radio Shack Basic and OS9, where you can take a disk extended Basic and run it in OS9. Um, so that's kind of cool. So he's trying to port some RS DOS Basic games to run in OS9. Um, yeah, a lot of great topics. We've started kind of a spontaneous show the past few weeks where we're doing Coco coding at night, where we just start talking about programming, and it's very long-winded, non-structured, non-sequitur type stuff where we're talking about BASIC and assembly and OS9 and RS-DOS and hardware and software and drive wire and TTL and RS-232. And speaking of drive wire, <laughs> you can make your computer a um, big hard drive for your uh, Coco True. by using drive wire and having True. a simple cable that you could even make yourself. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm actually really surprised in how well those community coding discussions have done. You know, we've we end up having, you know, a dozen or two dozen people with us for four or five hours. We, into the midnight hours for me, were sitting here talking. I, I, the last time we did it, I'm like, guys, I would love to keep going, but my eyelids are, are, are failing me right now. I can't keep them open. I got to pull the plug on this. But yeah, last time we were up till midnight my time and there was no, we were not ready to stop. You know, we just kept going and talking and just sharing ideas. So it was kind of cool. It's not really a show as much as it is almost like a geek club where we're just hanging out talking about stuff. But it was really cool. I got a dozen or more people doing that live. The, the replays have gone into the 150 plus views. So for an obscure, long format uh, niche topic, people are enjoying that. So we're going to probably continue those. Um, we've had 10 episodes of Programming and Assembly with Steve Bjork, and I've been meaning to release those videos just on their own as its own series. So hopefully I'll get going on that. Um, what else? There's a lot of game reviews on, uh, on, you know, on what YouTube Yeah. that, uh, if you find a particular game that, uh, you know, you might have been able to acquire or you're looking for, you, you look on YouTube and you can maybe find it previewed. Yep. Absolutely. And then see if you want to use it. And there's uh, adventure games that'll keep you busy for a whole long time, especially. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we need Doom to do one. that. Yeah, we need to do that one night, like a group uh, crowdsourced adventure game. And uh, maybe a good one might be the Interbank Incident, since I've never solved that one. Richard Lorbieski seems to have a lot of knowledge about it. Yeah, I've um, never seen it played at yeah. all. Yeah. We get one of those hooked up. My problem was it would it looks best on the Coco VGA, but I couldn't get the speech sound pack to work on my Coco VGA PC uh, so or Coco. So I got to see if I can't solve that problem. But that would be a cool little project. We kind of crowdsource and work on a group solution to one of these bigger adventure games. Um, that would be fun. Uh, what else? Essential stuff. So we have the Coco SDC. We all agree that's. What about memory upgrades? If you got a Coco two or three, we're getting back to now episode one twelve where we talked about. RAM. What do we think the minimum requirement for RAM on a Coco 3 is? 512, right? 512 is not recommended. It's minimum requirements. We've decided it has been spoken. It has been decreed. If you don't have 512, spend $15 and get it. It's easy to do. It's cheap. It can be done. Make it so, number one. Um, and then there's two yep. eggs. Yep, vendors. There are a plethora of vendors. There, there's a plethora of at least two vendors making... Uh, 512 upgrades. Jim Brain's working on an 8 meg upgrade, so we're gonna, there's going to be all kinds of crazy memory. And there are people that will fix your computer if you bought one; it's defective and it isn't working. That's right. We have uh, Cloud Nine will do that. Voice on Tech. Uh, we have a lot of other members of the community that will do that. Uh, and we got people that will actually break your machine trying to help you fix it. <laughs> we have people that will break it for you. There we go. <laughs> We have yeah, people that will solder their hair. There's people that will <laughs> solder their hair, yes. Uh, there, there is a new processor we can add to it, a newer one. It's still old. Yeah, the 6309. 63. Yes. 6309. There are new Advantage. hardware options on the horizon, mm -hmm. such as? And sound chips, which we lacked yeah. back in the day. Nick, if you're speaking to us, you're we can't hear you unless you're speaking to someone else. Game pad adapters. Game pad like, adapters. Yes. It so really use like a modern Sega, well, modern Sega game pad, uh, which is a lot better for some games. Yeah, like the yeah. Sega Atari style joysticks, which are the digital, more arcadey style, or game console style joysticks. There's a couple of adapters for those. Those are good. Or just a mouse up down left right like uh donkey kong or whatever as yeah to, like, uh like yeah as uh mark b was saying there's mouse adapters now david lad's working on a mouse adapter where you can plug in a ps2 mouse to your coco which is better than the coco mice which are harder to come by and just generally suck as, as far as mice go especially the original steel ball coco mouse that thing made a better boat anchor than it did a mouse uh, <laughs> makes ease of use a little easier to handle in some games yeah. <laughs> Chad says, uh, here, let me, get a, let me get a Steve Irwin quote here. Oh, crikey. <laughs> Chad says, crikey, look at the size of that ram. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Uh, so some, some of us have uh, upgraded our computers to eight megabytes, if you can believe it. Yeah. And so, some have uh, two megabytes as a normal, seems like some now, even though um, normal used to be 128. And then, you know, when you'd look in the magazines and see the offers for the new 512 upgrades, and mm -hmm. that was back in the day. Now it's common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not hard to put in yourself. There's videos on that, yep, right? Yep, we released one of those just recently on uh, Facebook. Yep. Uh, how to add RAM upgrades to a Coco 3. What about Coco 1 and 2? Bruce, you were asking the question about a project maybe you and your son Jacob might want to do about upgrading RAM on a Coco 1 or 2, which is not quite as cut and dry. Um, but what are your thoughts on that, and have you made any progress on planning to do that? Well, still looking into that. Um... I could do, um, so I've got a, a, a pretty old Coco One. It's got a revision D board. I think it went up to F. I think F is the latest before we went over to a Coco Two, is that right? Yeah. So the yeah. D board is, uh, it's a little old and wonky and uh, they weren't really expecting, for instance, to, to put 64K RAM into it. <laughs> But there are ways. Uh, someone pointed me to an article from um, one of the magazines from way back when that showed how, uh, a somewhat easier way to do it. And it looks like a fun kind of project. The idea is, is uh, to instead of doing something permanent to your Coco, is you pull the memory chips out and you stick a bunch of sockets in. And there, there are several, like what you need to do is, is actually, you know, solder one pin over to this other pin. It's, it's kind of crazy and scary. Piggybacking. <laughs> Yeah, and there's, and the and piggybacking, right? So, mm. um, but if you do all that work on the sockets and drop the sockets in, then then you're not actually, you know, the chance of harming your cocoa goes down a lot. So that looks a little complicated for me, but I, you know, if I get my head around it, I think I could do that. Um, I saw another project recently where you could just add a simple power light, a little LED that you stick on the case, and so you can okay. tell it's on, so you don't accidentally yank the wrong cartridge out. And yeah, true. Your cocoa. And the other thing was the uh, the RF output on on that. It's um, I mean you've just talked about ways of of making it better uh, by bypassing that box. Um, it's still pretty bad. Okay. But um, there is uh, there is now. Oh, I know Carlos Camacho and I think it was David O'Connor. I think David O'Connor devised a uh, a composite output circuit that should work. And okay. Carlos Macho may be making circuit boards for it. So okay. that would be, um, that I think that would be my go-to. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, to get it usable again. Which includes sound also. Is that... the, the composite out, would that have audio out as well? It should. I, I don't know. You kind of uh, uh, have to. Kit? I guess, well, I guess, yeah, right. Yeah. How, otherwise, how would you get audio, Because you're right? breaking it out from the RF, yeah. Um, right. Were you asking a question there, Mark? About was it being sold uh, as a kit? It, does it Zipster Zone sell a uh, composite kit? Probably does. Yeah, but I think it's for F boards. I should look. At, I should look at that. In fact, I think I think Ed may have commented on on one of my posts about that. I should follow that up and see. Okay. See An another at. one that Ed has too. That's very clean. But this is for Coco Three. But he's taking the RGB out from the Coco Three and then g giving you an S video out from there. That's super clean. And I and I had an early prototype of that, which I still have and I use on occasion. And it's it's just as good as the HDMI output. The only thing it doesn't give you is the uh, composite. But if you just want RGB that's clean and pristine, that, that uh, RGB to RG, uh, to S video. Um, it's a great, it's a yeah. great tool. I think it'd be a fun thing also, because this is being a, this Coco that I've got, it's a 4k Coco. And so it's got color basic 1.0, I think. Okay. To get a, uh, uh, a ROM replacement for that and uh, an extended color. Okay. Basic well, you just made me think of something. You might want to look into that Moo board, M O O H. Reach out yeah. to reach out to Ron Klein. He's a little bit more familiar with that. But the Moo board is gives is a you. It's a cartridge. Yeah. I think I think it gives you five twelve k of RAM. Right. And I think there's also an EEPROM socket on there. Where if you needed to upgrade a Coco to extended basic, you could probably do that. Hmm. And there are sources to get that. I know Marco now has got an EEPROM burner, and David Ladd's got an EEPROM burner, and I think Ed Snyder was also selling at one point in time disc extended color basic burned ROMs. 
for people who need to upgrade Coco. So I think that I have a Moo also. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that does the Moo add RAM to your Coco one and two. Yeah, it does. There's even a version of OS nine uh, level two for it. Yeah. Oh, so gosh. so rather than having to solder anything, you can just plug in a cartridge and upgrade a Coco one or two to five twelve k RAM with an MMU. So it gives it like Coco three like capabilities. That's that's crazy. Now, yeah. of course, that that would mean I'd still have to use a cassette deck for loading and saving, right? Uh, or a, or a mini MPI. Um, a MPI, Mega Mini MPI, yeah. or just Mini Actually, MPI. There's currently a bug in the Moo. It won't work without an MPI, actually. Ah. Oh. No. Okay. Interesting. So maybe you should maybe you should go to um, the Zipster's place so you can see the the new MPIs that are being made. Yeah. Another thing too is reach out to Jim Brain about his Coco Mem Junior because that was a solderless thing that just went underneath the CPU. I think it plugged into the CPU socket and then the CPU plugged into it. And the Coco Mem Junior is supposed to give you something like two megs of RAM, or something a silly, one? for a Coco One and Two. Yeah, Coco Mem Junior Woo. is uh, adding an easy RAM upgrade for for Coco One and Twos. Right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Terry Steen is saying his favorite project was a pause switch that used a spare NOR gate on the board with to logic pair it with. The card input, so you could pause the computer and not mess up the disk I/O. Whoa! I understood some of what he I, said there, but I, yeah, I think I know what he meant. That's I pretty know, cool. I know David Line, David Lads talked about the halt line, where you could use, you could tap the halt line into a switch, mm -hmm. where you could pause, pa literally pause your whole CPU with with the press of a button and then unpause it. Um, it's like Santa pause. Santa Paws, yeah. <laughs> now, this was a good call, Ron. I mean, there's there, there's a lot of things. And for those of us who are a little bit more, uh, you know, caught up with the community, where th this is like second nature to us. But there's new people entering the community all the time that have those questions. What to do with our Cocoa? What's out there for the Cocoa? There's so much new software that's been out in the past couple of years. There's all kinds of new hardware. There's new keyboards that Ed Snyder's working on. There's new multi-pack interfaces. There are custom joysticks that John Strong's working on, um, sound devices, memory upgrades, video output upgrade options, um, you know? Oh, so so Terry's saying that the Halt line does not give you floppy drive control, so his would pause things but still let the disk I.O. run. So that's a special kind of pause there, huh? Terry, why don't you join us, dude? Um, cool. What else? What else? Good, good topic, guys. If you're new to the Coco, what do you need to know? Oh, and um, you can print through uh, DriveWire, isn't that correct? To your modern printer? Uh, if you, you wanted to? I think so. Because uh, most people, when they get an old printer, there's no hope for <laughs> getting a, a ribbon for it. Uh, even though you'd probably like to use it, the only really way you could do it is if you had carbon paper i suppose but um you know and you're looking at the old baud rates which are slow 600 yeah, yeah. 1200 but um if you do want to print something maybe you have old old diskettes and you want to you know that's another thing you can convert if you if you get a cocoa with a bunch of discs there are ways to get those discs digitized to uh to your PC. Yeah, it's kind of what Eric Canals was working on. Or you this. can find them on uh, the, sometimes they're already on the um, on the archive. Archive, yeah. Yeah, colorcomputerarchive.com Yeah, as far as the printers go, um, last year I was on eBay, which would be a delayed uh, acquisition. Um, I came across some uh, receipt printers that you could embed in like a table or something like that because they're designed for embedded use, but they have TTL connections on the bottom for serial. So if you add a max 232 chip to them, you could then run them to the Bitbanger port and their default baud rate is 9,600. So right there, you'd have a printer that you can go to Walmart and get the receipt paper and have a small little printer for the cocoa without having to buy a um an old dmp would they would they do any kind of graphics do you think 
or is that just text? O only the graphics that the receipt printer support. Okay. Terry Steen's got to go, but he says he'll see us tomorrow. He goes, I'll have to dig out my old schematic I made. It does use the halt, but it does not take over the halt. Excellent show. See you tomorrow. Um, you see what David did there? David squeezed in a TTL and Bitbanger. He, he just never ceases to let us down, right? <laughs> so, um, well, and Ron brought up the drive wire stuff. So, you know, we got it all yeah. rolling out. <laughs> and, of course, Eric brought up the floppy drives, you know. He brought in the good old magnetic media. <laughs> Which, believe it or not, still works. Still works. Well, you know, when the, got... when the nuclear winter happens, you guys have seen that commercial, right? When they drop the big giant EMP and all, all electronics go south, David Ladd and his floppies is going to save civilization and humanity for us. So <laughs> coming to oh, a theater near you. <laughs> well, we just milked another half hour out of the show thanks to Ron <laughs> Klein. So good job there. I'm not Ron Klein, but Ron Del Vaux. Ron Del I'll Bo. be him if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's good. I think we've 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 definitely touched on a number. There, it's just it's so easy to take for granted because there's so much stuff, and um, you know. But if you're new, it can be daunting and overwhelming, and and possibly even like I don't even know where to begin. So a lot of people have come across the Facebook group or the mailing list or the Coco Crew podcast or our show or one of these websites. Um, and so that's a great starting point. And then, um, you know, hopefully you'll find out some more stuff. So, again, just to kind of shameful plug, but I created this for a reason, but imacoconut.com, ima, I-M-A, C-O-C-O-N-U-T.com, has a lot of this stuff there, just easy to get to. Um, and then if there's something you guys know about that's not there, let us know. We'll, we'll put it up there. Uh, and Is there a link, a link to real-time clocks anywhere? Mm. Is there a link? Uh, RTC.org is the organization for real-time clocks, right? So I believe there's a website called time.gov you can go to, Ron. So. Oh. <laughs> if you ever want to know what time it Very is, good. just go to time.gov. Um, all right. Are we ready to put a fork in this one? Sure, why not? Um, Nick, did you want to talk about your game? We, we mentioned your blog post, but you want to talk about Oh, no, it's, a, it's all right. I'll wait for the next update. All right, I'm going to play the outro. Give you give you guys. Hold on, Stevie. Uh, yes, David Lapp. Um, One thing I was looking at uh, our uh, live streaming stuff and some of the um, stuff that you have related to the Coco Talk. Um, could we also add into the video descriptions? Also, I'm a Coco nut. So uh, that way. It's yes. Because I see all the videos, the Discord channel, Nick Marentes, the Facebook group. But you're, I'm a Coco Nuts. And I don't see it listed in in the uh, the, the description to the our videos. I think it's in some of them, but it might it's have in some of them. Yeah. But yeah, no, I need to make that part of the standard. Okay, good, good point there, David Lott. I'll make it a note when I add some of the indexing stuff to yeah. make sure it's. In. So yeah. that's just something. Since Ron brought up the good point that we need to be putting information out there for the new people coming back that maybe that should be a part of the description of the videos absolutely absolutely and right. I, I believe i mentioned it in the closing credits but it's just kind of there so I, I think we've definitely plugged it a lot on this episode so but yeah we should probably make it a point to um to make that better known right good call Good call. Thank, good suggestion, David Ladder. All right, I'm going to play the outro, and then we'll be back for some. Oh, oh don't, don't we want to just have one saying from oh, our book Australian Oh, we forgot all about that. Slang? Yes. Well, let's have several. All right, okay, so well, just pull here's up a one. random page. Here's one. Uh, drop a clanger. <laughs> now, we need to say that with a proper <laughs> Australian accent. Nick Marentes, can you say, drop a clanger? <laughs> <laughs> drop a clanger. I can't say properly. <laughs> okay. The meaning is um, disclose something embarrassing or a piece of startling information. Oh, drop oh yeah. A I that. I'm going to drop a <laughs> clanger. 
All right. And there's also Drop a Darkie, but I don't know what that <laughs> Drop is. Drop a Darkie. Uh, yeah, I, I do know that one. Don't that, worry about that one. That's, <laughs> that's sounding like borderline politically incorrect there. Uh, uh, All right. Yeah. Okay, I flip. Think Ron's yeah. read it. <laughs> flip, flip, flip through a few, on a few random pages down. Let's just pick out a page at random and point to a verse here. And let's. let's... Uh, heavens to Betsy. Heavens to Betsy. I've heard that one before. A mild oath, exclamation of surprise, disbelief, wonder, annoyance, frustration. You got to say it with an Australian. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens I to Betsy. Look at the, Heavens to Betsy. Look at the clangers on that beast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh. All right. What? Give us another one, Ron. These are Australian Play slang Australian from the from the not nine thousand page a, manual. Not a patch on. Not a patch on. Oh yeah, not a, like doesn't compare to. Right. Yeah. Not a show. Not uh, a patch on. And not think twice about. Oh, geez. Give us a good one. A revelation here. A word we've That's never good. heard before. Raise a laugh, raise hell, uh, raise one's hopes. Look under P for piss. You see what they got there? <laughs> that's, that's what they call beer, having a can of piss. <laughs> stingy. Stingy. Uh oh, what's a stingy? Uh, pars parsimonious, mean, miserly, scantly. Oh, stingy. Oh, stingy. stingy. Yeah. Stingy, yeah. Stingy. Uh, we know what stingy means. It means greedy. Uh, stink hot. Stinking hot. Stinking hot. Crikey. Stinking hot. Unpleasantly hot, hot and humid <laughs> weather conditions. <laughs> oh, stone, it's cold, stone cold sober. Stone cold sober. Unfortunately, what I am right now. Not drunk or <laughs> intoxicated. Uh, D. Bruce recommended we run the Coco Forever screening again video. The Coco oh. Forever screening video. Uh, yeah. I got to find that on his YouTube channel real quick. Hold on. No problem. What's Tupperance? Can not know. Prior to decimal currency, the sum of two pence. Yeah, the juice of Mary Poppins. Tuppence. 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 Yeah, Mary Poppins. Is that like Is there this? any slang relating to hitting uh, furniture with a vehicle? <laughs> Crikey, would you look at the couch on that highway? <laughs> uh, all right, hold that. Hold that thought. I'm gonna go over to showing the. Uh, just to remind you guys, if you want to join us tomorrow, send an email to Coco Talk at Coco Talk Live for our private screening. And here's the preview for that. How does it feel? Coco forever. I'm still I, I haven't seen any of the other retro or even modern communities try to pull off something like this. This is unique. Next to the Switcheroo, the hottest selling cocoa product of 2018. CocoForever.gracenote.ca all right, there we go. Good call there, DeBruce. <laughs> that commercial reminds me of uh, one of those old uh, Japanese karate shows. <laughs> the where, the voice, where the voice and the, uh, and the words don't match. <laughs> Garbage guts. Garbage Gritty. guts. <laughs> Gritty person who eats often and eats leftovers. Garbage guts. Wow, that's a new one. Excuse me, give us a little taste again of his. Uh, Faster than instant sense. coffee. Faster than instant coffee. That's not what this show has been so far, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, feel, feel, feeling chipper. Feeling chipper. Is that like happy? Yeah. Feeling elated, having a sense of well being. Are you feeling chipper there, mate? Was it chipper? <laughs> chipper. Oh, grog? Grog's beer? 
Oh, Grog? I thought it was Foster's. Yeah, it's Grog. Foster's is a brand name. It's like Budweiser. Oh, I know, I know. It was a commercial. It's a commercial. for beer. Yeah. How to speak Australian. Foster's Australian for beer. Australian for beer. Yeah, the only thing we know about Australian <laughs> stuff is what we see in the movies here in the States, right? So here's here's, here's, a, here's a borderline one. Don't stand around like a bottle of stale piss. <laughs> <laughs> and that's beer, right? So they call it that's piss beer. beer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey mate, don't stand around like a bottle of stale piss. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey! All right, crikey. Right. like a bottle well, of style piss. Everybody now. <laughs> Later, everyone. How, how is right, this David, related like... to the Coco Two? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we're learning how to speak Australian here. All right. Hey, we're just boosting Australian content. So there we, we go. Out. That's right. We <laughs> had... All right. I'm going to play the outro. You think of a couple more yep. good zingers, and we'll be right back after this, Ron Delvo. Okay. This concludes another episode of Coco Talk, the world's leading live talk show featuring the Tandy Color Computer. For all things Coco Talk, visit us on the web at cocotalk.live. We'd love to hear from you. Send feedback, suggestions, even segments via email to cocotalk at cocotalk.live. Coco Talk is rocking the 8-bit world, keeping the Tandy flame alive. We may be mocked, but we'll never stop. Cause Coco Talk is rocking the A Big World Consider supporting the show with a purchase of merchandise from our retro swag shop at 8bit256.com. If you'd like to become a patron of the show, click the Patreon link at our website at CocoTalk.live. Coco Talk is rocking the A-Bit World. Keeping the tandy flame alive We may be mocked, but we'll never stop Cause Coco Talk is rocking the A-B world Coco Talk would not exist without the community, its cast, crew, and contributors. Thanks go to Curtis Boyle, David Ladd, Mark Overholzer, Grant Leedy, Bruce Moore, Nick Marenkis, Ron Delvo, Rick Adams, Jason Riker, Richard Lorbieski, Jim Brain, Tom C., Rob Inman, Mark Bosley, Brian Joyce, Ken Riker, David O'Connor, Brian Weasler, Terry Steggy, Nick Marota, John Strong, and many more, especially to Steve Bjork for production suggestions and James Diffendaffer for making my head explode. Please help support the Coco community by visiting some of its various contributors. A list of resources is available at imacoconut.com. That's I-M-A-C-O-C-O-N-U-T dot com. The Coco Talk theme song is copyright 2008 by D. Bruce Moore and Greg Sheeler. Mixed, mastered, and produced by D. Bruce Moore. Good show, guys. Two hours. Two hours of nonstop mediocre content. Um, but Eric Canales, thanks for being here. Thanks for being our news anchor today. Yeah, and, thanks for having me, as always. Oh, and you're always welcome. And Eric is on Discord all the time. If you guys join us on Discord, Eric and many of us are there just chatting it away on a practically daily basis. Uh, Nick just... Moreno. Yes, yeah, Jason. Got one one note here. Uh, next week, um, I'm planning on uh, popping in from the classic console and arcade gaming show in Cleveland. Is that Korg's Con? No, it's not Korg's Con. It's uh, that's a different thing. It's uh, okay. ccagshow.com. Okay, okay. Well, that'd be great. So you're gonna be our foreign correspondent. Um, excellent. That's from the foreign country of Cleveland. Okay, country of Cleveland. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Nick Morota, thank you for being here. You were too kind. And Mark D. Overholzer, always a pleasure. Mark Bosley. Uh, Ron Delvo, great last-minute uh, topic discussion there. What to do if you're new to the cocoa? What are some cocoa essentials? 
Uh, good topic. I think we covered a lot. Um, there's never enough when it comes to Coco stuff, though. Grant Leedy, the Internet's own. Grant Leedy has been with us and uh, Nick Morenti's. Uh, anybody have any parting thoughts, words of wisdom you'd like to leave people with? Well, hopefully we won't be on the grog tomorrow in the show. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean in your Australian? On the segment? grog is excessive. excessive indulge yeah. in alcohol <laughs> ah on the grog mate hey don't stand around like a can of stale piece you got to be on the grog there mate <laughs> and then there's also the uh on the knocker on the knocker <laughs> yeah, i don't even know what i know you want to ask it's being on time punctuality being on time all right okay yeah, it's, it's nothing bad okay. I mean, yeah i think yeah anyway yeah, i want to say the show <laughs> <laughs> Push the button, Frank. All right. So, we'd like to apologize to anything I might have said on in that book that to our Nick. (laughs) No, it's all right. (laughs) (laughs) He's going to have an American book next next time. We are going to press the button. We're going to end the live video podcast, and then seconds later, we're going to be ending the live audio podcast. Uh, let's also thank uh, our our viewers, right? So who's been out here in the live audience here today with us? Nick Morota, Terry Steggy, Mark Overholzer, Mark B, uh, Ken Reichard, and Tim Franklin, and Terry Steen, and Joe Burnett, and Davey Mitchell, and DeBruce Moore, Mark Overholzer, and uh, DeBruce, and Jason, that's Jason Pittman, who's going to join us tomorrow. Matchy has been out there. Mark Overholzer. Alexander Wallace from Mexico has been here. Paul Fiscarelli has been here. Chad Cunnington from Australia, where we say, don't stand around like a can of stale piss. And Mr. James <laughs> Diffendaffer has been out here. And all kinds of people have been on the show. Alexander Wallace, Mr. James, Chad Cunnington, Matchy, and Joe Burnett, Terry Steggy, Terry Steen, Alexander Wallace, um, uh, Dave's Hobbies, Erico has been out there. And that's just on the uh, YouTube feed. When I, when I switch over here to the Facebook feed, I remember Amy has been here with us. Who's been with us here on Facebook? So Fred Dufois has been here. Ron Klein joined, Al Curtis Boyle, Al Hartman joined, Nick Morota joined, Terry Steggy, Christian Turner, Tim Franklin, Chad Edward, and Greg Dion um, said something. Uh, Richard Atkinson has been, uh, I think he's one of the uh, Dragon guys was out there. And Luciano was here. And Amy uh, Grimwood was here. Amy's the one who did the artwork for the Cocoa Fest this year, Make the Trek. She was one of the booth babes there at Cocoa Fest as well, Richard Atkinson. John Laurie Stinnett has been here in the live chat. Paul Shoemaker joined. And so did Daniel Shepard. And Fred Dufois is saying goodbye all. So we're going to press the button. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Adios. Goodbye, everybody. All right. We're pressing the button on the live video feed in three Mississippi, two Mississippi, and you hang